Morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to do probably do several of these uh, little video clips that I feel about corporations and, and company raises and certain talk show hosts and radio people that uh, think that anybody could just go out and get a job and demand raises from your company and everything. But real quick, real quick, real quick. I just want to talk to you about fucking company raises. Who do you know? How many people do you know? Get a fucking raise today, right? How many people do you know go into your boss and say, I want a raise? I don't know, man. I haven't gotten a raise since the 80s. I'm talking about merit raises, not cost of living raises. There used to be a time where you went in and you got a merit raise from your boss, right? Now it's all they, that they flipped that to a cost of living raise back in the 80s, right? And you get these certain people out there that say, oh, go in and get a raise, get a raise, get your boss for a raise, you deserve a raise. Let me tell you something. These, these companies, they don't give you raises anymore. They give you a cost of living increase. It's not a raise. It's just it's an increase, and it's minute. And some companies, they, they give a quarter, some 50 cents, some 60 cents. It's just enough to get by. You know, and I personally have had it with this bullshit with these people on the radio at night that I listen to when I drive that are constantly saying, oh, you can get a raise, you can get get a job, go to North Dakota. They want you to go to North Dakota, get a freaking job. Minus 50. Anyway, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I, how many of you out there know people that do not get raises who haven't? My, my wife hasn't gotten a raise in 12 years. She got promotions but they, they she doesn't get any raises and i spoke to a guy last night he knows several people that don't get raises but yet these ceos ceos check out some of their salaries online what they're making a year right just check it out we'll, we'll get into that someday but uh you know we the working man we just get enough to get by now you want the economy to grow give us some money to spend they say these companies are making money. Then they're not spending and they're holding back the money, all this stuff, right? Give it to us, the working man, so we could spend some money and buy some things for this. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, you know, I, I, I really, something's got to change, man. Something's got to change and they got to change soon. Right. Okay. It just happens to be Saturday afternoon. Um, Saturday afternoon, uh, May the 3rd, 2014. Yes, it is a Cinco de Mayo week. Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May, is this, uh... Monday. Really? Monday. It's Monday? Oh, oh. today's the 3rd. That's right. <laughs> you know, for those of you that watched Sesame Street growing up, the fifth is Monday and uh, what Cinco de Mayo is is uh, Mexico's Independence Day they 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 uh, they were liberated from the French uh, right for first Spain a battle. it was a battle a battle against it was a, the French it was a battle 18, against the French 1862 yeah. huh 1862 so 18 after 1862 they uh, won their independence and uh, I guess they. I don't know what the hell the French were doing over there in the first place, but who the there hell? The, the, the colonists, the European colonists, were fighting for land. You know, I suppose. You know, you had the French. Uh, well, they had Florida. The, the Spain, France, and England fighting for land. Yeah, well, and the, and the French had Florida. Yeah, and Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana, Louisiana, definitely. You know, you yeah. see New Orleans with the with the French lily, mm -hmm. fleur de lis. And uh, and then there were there were um, the French I think had uh, parts of the Midwest. What is the Louisiana Purchase? I think that was. Uh, uh and that was that was the more east. Yeah. East south southeast. Yeah. But anyway, getting back to uh, Mexico's Independence Day, uh, then they established that flag that we all know, the um, uh, red, white, and green with the eagle in the center, uh, hovering over the cactus on top of the cactus. I think holding a, a serpent in one in one talon. He's holding a snake. I believe that's the Mexican flag. Yeah, yeah. So happy Cinco de Mayo to 
all you uh, Mexican Americans, including people Mexicans living in Mexico and throughout the world, and, and, and all the illegal immigrants here, all Mexicans everywhere. Happy Cinco de Mayo, uh, and. Um, you know, for those of you that are not Mexican, that love Mexican food and frozen margaritas and, and good Mexican beer, like myself, happy Cinco de Mayo to me too. And, uh, hey, let me tell you something about people who squawk about illegal immigrants. If it wasn't for those greedy, scumbag, American corporatist uh, uh, owners of companies and CEOs that, that love to hire the illegal immigrants so they can pay them cheap yeah. below minimum wage there wouldn't be any uh, illegal immigration issue uh -huh. Uh -huh. but uh, I just want to say um, and if Mexico itself provided right. for their people instead of their 35 big families who own everything they wouldn't come over here in the first place well doesn't doesn't that apply to all third world countries yep. everywhere Yep. If it wasn't for their political corruption, oh. there would never be an illegal immigrant issue because their economies would be based on a fair government. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of instead of the uh, the few on top uh, hoarding all the wealth and natural resources and money for themselves, and 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 and, and no. And I repeat no, repeat no, where's my prop? No trickling down like you're supposed to have. Instead of trickle down economics in the world with today's uh, corporate plutocracy and corruption, you have siphoned up yeah, well, to, the, to the wealthy up. economics. This is a siphon, by the way, people. Siphon up economics. You're actually not supposed to have trickled down either. You're supposed to have everyone having his own land. Pistol, pistol down. And his own way to make a living. His That's own right. wine. Now, uh, I want to salute, uh, before you saw us at the beginning of our show here, I want to salute uh, my good friend, longtime good friend, and uh, one, of our, <laughs> uh, one of our team members, for Chisler's Hall of Shame, the one and only Venting Vinnie Blake for an excellent uh, commentary before at the beginning of this show. And Vinnie Blake was uh, discussing the subject, whatever happened to the raises based on merit? And, 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 and not, the, not this little uh, uh, drop in a bucket uh, uh, cost of living raise that they seem to give people just to pacify them, employ employees, but real raises based on merit. And that was his the, the basis of his video. Well, on, Excellent job. Unfortunately, anyway. there is no such thing as merit anymore because they can find somebody with just as much intelligence or merit for half the price. Well, that's what they say. Okay. That's what they say they can find somebody just as good as you. Yes. They could, they could also uh, make up, it's your word against theirs, they can make up any excuse. There are hundreds of thousands. To lay you off. Hundreds of thousands of PhDs out there unemployed at the moment. And master's degree and bachelor's degree. That's correct. That's correct. Their, their, their unemployment is much higher than what the government tells you, so unfortunately, well, they had a good month in April. The ball's in their court. They're in the driver's seat. 288,000 jobs were created. However, yeah, right. they don't tell you how many people gave up looking. Yeah, okay. who, who gave up looking, which means they're off the statistics. They're, they're not there so anymore. So the uh, unemployment rate is down to 6.3 right now. Right. 6.3 Yeah. from 6.7. I want to salute also the government of India, because from what I understand, India, who ha who has said no to Monsanto's GMOs, yeah. is having a record bumper crop of of growing. Their agriculture is agricultural industry is doing fantastically with non-GMO crops. So I just want to salute However, India. However, 
What about the 250,000 farmers in India who committed suicide because of GMO? Why did they do that? Because they had to buy the seeds every Why year. Why do they have to buy? Having their Why own. did they have to buy the seeds? Because that's what Monsanto did. What did the Indian government say in that and uh, back then? And they, the, they took the they took the bribes. They took the shkola, they took the bribes. They took the shkola, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, and um, I also two hundred fifty thousand drank pesticides and died. Hey, they found a specific herbicide now in uh, the mother's milk Oof. of American women. Oh. In the nur during nursing, they found uh, they have found a specific herbicide. So you know this uh, Monsanto situation is much is it, worse than people think. I think that was the glyphosate from the GMO yeah. Roundup. Okay, let me get the formalities over with, real quick. Formalities. Formalities. Where is this friggin' thing? Here we go. I would like to now formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Can you dig it? Man. During Cinco de Mayo week. Welcome aboard our uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth uh, starship, named the Starship Censored. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Good. Good, 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 good. Very good, very good. That's our formality. Now, let me get back to saluting. Uh-oh. I would like to formally salute the city of Seattle, Washington who has raised their minimum wage recently to $15 per hour. Nice. Which will be sort of an example or, or set of precedents for the, for the rest of the United States. They, they, when they, when, because they'll always, if, if the Republicans say no, they can always throw up to their faces, hey, Seattle did it. Forget about ten ten an hour. Forget about eleven dollars an hour. That's chump change, chump chicken change. chicken scratch, chicken, chicken, chicken feed, chicken. chump yeah. change. Seattle did it. If Seattle did it, we can do it too. And they'll always have that to throw up in their face. Thank you, Seattle, for doing the right thing. And, and it's not about political parties. It's about doing the right thing. Yeah. And Seattle, Washington did it, and I'm proud of them. Yeah. What would you like to say about Seattle? Nothing about Seattle, but the Republicans will say, well, it's a job killer. Oh, sure. Yeah, where? In mainland China? Everywhere. Jo oh, sure. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah, it's a job killer, my ass. A job be killer. Careful there. They're, 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 they're like broken records. They, they, they say the same crap over and over to the right wing. Some, hey, hey, look, for instance, you got Ann Coulter. All the time she's talking and, about... And Hunter? She's talking about women. Women shouldn't do this. Women shouldn't do that. Yeah. Women shouldn't vote. Women shouldn't... Do she being she's paid a off woman. The, is she being she's paid off... She's a woman. Well, why is she turning against her own gender? That's the question, isn't it? Well, maybe she's paid off to do that. I, I don't know what it is, maybe. but why would somebody talk against themselves? Maybe they, they greased her palm very well. Doesn't she really? At Fox News. She would never sell her books if they got their way. Women hate her. Women, uh, you know how Some women. you know how many women can't stand the Fox News, uh, the Fox News blonde bombshells. They, they they can't stand them because they feel that they're traitors to their own now, gender. Of course, but they still get support. The Republicans still get support. Although they need voter ID and et cetera to, you know, cut, mm -hmm. the, cut the Democrat voting voters, but uh, they still get their support. That's the problem. Just like Clarence Thomas and, and Herman Cain uh, are, are like traitors to their own race, to the to, to, Did you see what Scalia did the other day? Who? Mr. Scalia? No, what did he 
did he do? He they had a case, right? And he wrote a opinion about ten years ago, and now he wrote the opinion to the new case opposite of what he wrote for the old case. Is he the man on? has Alzheimer's. Dementia. Okay. He's going to end up like Ronald Reagan. He's going to be going, well, I don't recall I said that. <laughs> I didn't think that we were, uh, you know, selling uh, 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 weapons to traitors. Terrorists, excuse me. Traitors. Yeah, they didn't. They were traitors. It's okay Mr. for Oliver North and the bunch. Yeah. Traitors. Yeah. And guess what? They got good jobs today. Good jobs today. Yes, sir. That's how we, we, we reward traitors and, and war criminals like George W. Bush and Mr. Iron Man Cheney. Uh, yeah, Iron Man Cheney with mechanical heart. Very hard, yeah. No, and absolutely no empathy or compassion. He's the, uh, the, the, these no are oxytocin. So sociopaths. That's what they seem to be. Uh -huh. You know, they can't, they can't, they can't distinguish right from wrong and they feel no remorse sociopaths yeah. you know, so, well, they have no empathy no no empathy at all they, don't they exemplify uh, Timothy 2 verses 3 to 14 right like exactly okay this is yeah how how the human race will gradually become or has become Come in, in, the in the end times. Yes. Yeah. To Timothy. Well, you know what? Let's see. Besides Seattle, that's really the biggest news. Uh, the rest are just the same old, same old, week after week about Republicans saying no to the minimum wage. And they show ugly old turtle face saying, uh, you know, saying no to the minimum wage, yet they get, got a humongous cost of living increase. Well, they got four the committees in, uh, 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 investigating Benghazi, and now they're going to have another one. Well, you saw what the... Uh, Mr. Darrell Issa is not satisfied yet. The witch hunt. Yes. Wants to involve the White House. Well, he he cut back. They cut back on the on the protection spending for the for the. Uh, that too. For the uh, embassies. That too. You know, just like they they cut the supplies to the troops in Iraq at that time. <laughs> so yes, good. We go to war with the with the. A uh, military that we have. We go to war. Well, you know, not happened. not Cheney or his family or his kids. No, no. Oh Cheney, no, Cheney got what? The poor, the, the poor kids go to war right. with nothing. You remember what Patton said, though? Of course, you go to war with the best. And I the also re I also remember what General Smedley Butler said. Yeah, you know go to war unless you're attacked. <laughs> Defense. Defense. Like the same attitude uh, that a good uh, uh, sensei or, or teacher in martial arts uh -huh. always uh, teaches the... David Carradine. Do not be... Oh, they all teach that. Do not be offensive. Yes, do not use your skills for offense. Uh -huh. uh, and like being a bully, uh, it's not about offense, it's about defense. Mm -hmm. Always uh, the first thing you do before fighting is to avoid trouble, you know, and flee from trouble and, and 
disfuse a situation first and use uh, your martial arts as a last resort for defense only. Same thing with United States military. And when was the last time our, our borders were threatened? Um, I guess you would say uh, Japanese Pearl Harbor. Attacking Pearl Harbor. That's an example, sure. Because we, Hawaii was the state. True. So you know, so ever since then, you know, when 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 they when these uh, flag waving tea baggers say, uh, well, you got to support the troops because they're they're defending our freedom. Yes, you huh. you, you have to support the troops, but they're not defending. Our freedom, because our freedom is not in danger by, by going to They're Afghanistan and Iraq. Freedom of the corporations to steal to other the banana to steal other people's oil. That's correct. I also read um, an article concerning the fact that even though our gas prices in the United States are going up, they showed uh, cargo ships ship being lots of fuel to uh, China. Better price. Better price, baby. That's what it's all about. What do you think this thing in XL pipeline is going to bring down the tar stands and etc. down to Texas and etc. You think that's going to go in the United States for 40 cents a gallon? Uh -uh. It's going on the you world know, market, I, baby. I believe I did read an article where China was processing the, the crude oil and uh, the petroleum uh, products into gasoline and then they're shipping the gasoline back here because of course China does it cheaper. Yeah. They're outsourcing everything thanks to the conservatives. Everything. Ah. They want to outsource everything, and uh, I guess what these idiots in the United States uh, who who go to the polls, you know, they they will slowly uh, become slaves. Well, now, they don't believe that good Christian people are going to do the wrong things for them. Good Christian people. Pop-ups and the, the prosperity preachers. Peter yeah. Popoff, Joel yeah. Olsteins, Joel Olsteen, the and guy who never uh, stops smiling. Yeah, they wouldn't do anything wrong to their people, would they? Oh, right-wing evangelical fundamentalists? Nah, yeah. not at all. Of course, they're teaching the kids down south that the dinosaurs were walking with you. Behemoth in Job is a dinosaur that the Earth is six thousand years old yeah. only. Sure, you know, sure it this is. This stuff is allowed. Incredible. No proof. No proof. This here hearsay. Yeah. Or her say. Or her say. History or history? Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's Jesse Ventura has been pumping out a lot of uh, video shows on 9/11. He seems to be on a 9/11 tangent. Well, because of that Pierce Morgan crap, I guess he thinks he's got to uh, bring this out in the open more. It's People just don't know. No. It's people like Pierce Morgan can be misled. What about the regular guy? That's Joe Sixpack. That's why he also does occasional shows on 
videos based on JFK's assassination. It's like unsolved mysteries is what well, they are. Well, that's solved. We know who killed them. But the but the it wasn't U Lee Harvey Oswald. But the U.S. the U.S. media would never dare discuss any of these subjects. No, they wouldn't. Right away, you'd, they'd be losing their corporate the sponsors. Sure, Barbara Walters made Jesse Ventura out to be some conspiracy theory nut. There you go. How dare can you assume that the U.S. How much the does she U.S. Know? government would actually do something like that or be involved in something like that? Oh, uh, gee whiz. We did a lot with the CIA. She's just pacif around the she's world. pacifying the, the, the network executives and the president of the uh, station who who pays her very handsomely when she was on or the Or she just might be ignorant of the facts. Some people are really that fucking stupid. That's right? correct. See, you don't have to be... Just because you're a multi-millionaire or, mm -hmm. or better, it doesn't necessarily mean you're wise and that you have common sense or that, or that, you're, you've, or that, that you're brilliant. Or that you've uh, studied that subject. Like Billy Morrow yeah. says, hey, what if some blithering idiot or uh, mentally challenged person uh, inherits a billion dollars? Does that, does that mean because he's a billionaire that, you know, he knew he was responsible for it, or, or he's special. Well, he is blessed by God. You know, I'm making sarcastic remarks of about course. people that are, that were born with a silver spoon in their mouth, uh -huh. like G.W. Bush. Yes, well, G.W. Bush is an example of a person who... Uh, Mentally challenged. Well, he, he believes that uh, he hit a triple. Really? When he went up to bat. Because of something like that. Because he inherited wealth or whatever. They all believe that they they, they, they hit the triple. They, they all start on third base. Yeah. Not, on, not at home plate. Yeah. We start at home plate. They start on third base, headed for home. You know, it's like going out with a chick. First base, second base, third base. Unless there's real chemistry. And then a home run. Yeah, but that depends on the chemistry between the man and the woman. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. you got to get the first base, second base, third base, and a home run. But yeah. these people start out with a triple, like this this ugly person, Donald Sterling, the owner of the Clippers. Ugly old geezer with prostate trouble, from what I hear. He's got cancer prostate, that's what they say. Yeah. Or, of course, that just may be a PR thing. And his... For uh, sympathy. And his, uh, his, his hoochie... Uh, uh, girlfriend or whatever, who reminds me a lot of when Anna Nicole Smith was alive yeah, yeah. and married to the to the billionaire or shriveled up prune billionaire. You know, she, I, she used to say, "I'm not with him for his money. I love him." That's exactly how she sounded. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, sure. She loves that shriveled up stuff that comes out of the wallet. The wallet. Yeah. Yes. She loves that green, that green uh, lettuce that just uh, gets and harvested at, at the bank. She can harvest it pretty good. I'm sure she. <laughs> I'm sure she uh, drained whatever life force was out of him, which wasn't very much because he had one foot on the banana peel just like this 
the grave. Yeah, that's what I meant. I like, just like this guy, uh, Sterling. You know? But anyway. Yeah, well, there's another thing. Uh, it happened during the South, during slavery, too, where the, the Massa, the Massa would uh, take the, uh, you know, and have his way with some of his slave women. Well, well the, what the, the hell? The is prettier the guy, ones. The guy is a racist. What the hell does he pick a mixed race woman to be with? Because my grandfather had an old saying. And, and this might sound crude to everybody, but my grandfather used to say that a stiff prick has no conscience. Yeah, but in his case, you're going to tell me that a stiff prick is involved? No, sir. What else no, is involved? How do you think he he partakes in uh, the carnal pleasures? Hey, they don't. It's just it's a trophy. It's a trophy on the arm. Well, it's like what well, to, to the to the to the to the man was eighty years old. He's oh, 80, him, 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 old. him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure he dabbles in in uh, in sex with her. I'm sure he does what he can. You know, he's with well, a beautiful well, sure. Asian uh, Asian young Asian woman. You know, she is a trophy. That's true. You Most know. of those guys who are rich and everything, like they have trophy wives. Yeah. You know? Well, but, but they get laid. Um, uh, uh, we don't know that. Well, what, what do you think they, they do? They may say that, but we don't know that. What do you think they do? Nothing? You think they're celibate? Yeah, yeah they're empty. They can't do it anymore. You mean like that liquor, that old liquor commercial, Dry Sack on the Rocks? Remember dry sack? It was a sherry in a sack, right? <laughs> dry sack on the rocks. Dry sack on the rocks. Oh, my God. We're, we're, we're really banging them out. Uh, uh, this, banging? Uh, this banging, yeah. No pun intended. No really, pun intended. No pun intended. We're banging them out this uh, uh, single to the mile week. Hey, my God. Now let us sink our teeth uh -oh. into these readings. Uh-oh. Uh. Let's see what trouble we can get into here. Yeah, let's sink them, brother. brother. Let's sink them teeth. The United States Supreme Court's McClutchin, McClutchin ruling mm -hmm. allowing donors to make the maximum contribution to an unlimited number of campaigns has continued the destruction of our democracy. Former Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis warned us about that when he said, we can either have a democracy in this country, or we can have great wealth concentrated in the hands of a few. But we can't have both. President Franklin Roosevelt, governing in times very similar to ours, reacted to Justice Brandeis' warning by putting a stop to great wealth concentrated in the hands of a few. In 1944, FDR got Congress to enact into law a, a top marginal tax rate of 94% on all income, more than 200 thousand dollars which would be equivalent to today to two million or six hundred and fourteen thousand dollars wow but in 1988 
President Ronald Reagan brought the robber barons back. That's right. Okay, we're here with uh, William H. Morrow. Now, we were talking the other day about today's society where you feel everybody is so afraid of offending someone, they feel like they have to walk on eggshells all the time. You don't feel they, like you have to. You have, you, you know, like it could be the owner of the uh, uh, Los Angeles Clippers, it could be somebody's girlfriend or wife who won't let them have hobbies interests, friends, you know, uh, uh, I did a show a while back called The uh, Pussification of the American Male, which which means, simply means that m men have to turn over... Introduce our other friend who just showed up, to Russell. Russell, hi Russell. Very dear friend. Hi Russell. Uh, good to have you, buddy. All right. But anyway, uh, um... They, it's almost like you have to give up who you are because somebody else is doing something for you. Like in the case of a significant other, they're providing sex. Does that mean you have to give up who you are and, and your passions and your, and your hobbies? Well, that's a guy's fault and sometimes a woman's fault. They, you know, people let someone put a so-called ring through their nose. Yeah, that's... Like I said, all my life, and Russell, I'm not saying this to brag, I've been with hundreds of women, and I've never had a, a bad, bad girl. My parents even said, my God, you've always had wonderful women. Maybe because I don't tolerate the bullshit. I'm not mean, or rude, or dictator. They just know I don't tolerate weirdness. If you're going to do this, right. bitch at me, well, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm goodbye. Right. And you're not going to give up your hobbies and interests and friends and passions. Do you know how many of my girlfriends supported my football career? They were they never missed the game. Never. They were there. They loved it. They stood on the sidelines. They cheered. They yelled. You know, they, they never said, I don't want you to play. You might get hurt. They, they knew I might get hurt. I did get hurt. They never, they never ordered you to stop playing? Not once. Not I, even. Not even a question. Because I know, I know men whose uh, wives or girlfriends literally tell them to give up what they like because because they are there and they're providing them with their with their no, beard it's, their it's, it's sexual like favors to, if you enjoy it i want to take it away from you and i don't understand why right and they like to punish their men by withholding sex too Ooh. and if the guy's that desperate you know? if the guy's that desperate He'll cave into that. And if the guy's smart, he'll move somewhere else. Is that right. simple? Like you said the other day, you know, you're going to give me an ultimatum? Please, go. Cheat I, on me. I accept your ultimatum. I, please, I pray. Get another boyfriend on the side. Please. That way I can do it and not feel as guilty. You know, really. Oh, well, number two, the bottom line, you know how I feel about marriage. I think it's bullshit. The same person, every single day. Oh. Well, yeah. you know what it is? It, 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 yeah, but the marriage... <laughs> I mean, really, that's what it comes down The marriage certificate is just a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper that allows them to take you to court. For... It has that's, that has monetary connections. Yes, to it. legal connections. Yeah, legal connections. That's all. That but if a person, if a person wants to stick it out with you through thick let and thin, let me interrupt you both. Yeah. If marriage is so good, why is the divorce rate so sky high? Okay. Mm -hmm. Why is the cheating rate so sky high? And those that are getting divorced, we know what the percentage is. Those that are still together that are cheating and nobody knows about because they stay together because of monetary reasons or because of the kids but they're still cheating on the side god knows how high the percentage could be it's it's high in both in both uh, accounts plus as a as a human you change guys get the big buddha gut women 
Everything skips. Everything expands. Cellulite, cellulite too. Oh, I, just, I don't want that. I don't well, well that. plus people's personality often change throughout the years too. You know? Their personalities and moods do change, yes. But I'm, talk I'm, I'm talking about men who literally have their women, so to speak, pressuring them not to go do the things they enjoy doing because they have to spend all this significant time with them. Well, then again, you look at people that can't get women, you wonder why. Uh, a friend of ours from 30 plus years ago who was an account, we won't say his name. I mean, what an oddity. His behavior was It was just not normal. Yeah. Now, now, what about walking on eggshells socially and having your career and and reputation destroyed if you're in the spotlight? Like, let's say, uh, like the owner of the Clippers. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, that's all. Why did he give this girl permission? And she claims that she had permission to record this. Why would you give permission to do that in the first place? Hey, don't tape everything I damn say. You know, really, turn the thing yeah. off. Turn it off. Well, you, I mean, you, why are you doing this? You're setting yeah. yourself up. Well, you, you've used the word liquid courage, which is alcohol. Well, I think some men, when they become super rich, that gives them courage to say any damn thing they want in public. Well, and, uh, they think they're untouchable, I guess. But, uh, you know, but uh, the bottom line, why should you get super rich? Why do you lose your dignity? Why do you, well, you, why do you lose your ethics and your morals? Yeah. Because now I have money. I'll become, I think I'll become an asshole. You know, because I have money. Well, even, I mean, why? Well, even, why do some don't? Yeah. You don't see what Bill Gates doing this, do you? No. Paul Allen, his partner. Donald Trump. Trump? Well, Trump, he, he opens his mouth, but it's nothing like this. Right. You know, I mean, really, he's entertaining in essence. Yeah. Why so many, so many yeah. do, some don't? It comes down to you. As the individual, you have character or you lack character. It's that simple. Yeah. It really is. So if, you, if, you, if you, you don't have he's it. just an asshole. That's all. The natural he born asshole. Shut these things or he's racist and prejudiced, which is nothing wrong with that. I don't agree with it. Uh, well, he, even, he has the right to be that. Well, even, if, he, if he wants to be. Yeah. Even haters have a right to their opinion. I don't agree with it, but you have a right to be that. I'm not a hunter. I will never kill an animal, but I'm very good with a gun. And uh, you have a right to hunt. Right. But I'm not going to crucify and, and come right. after you because but, you hunt. I don't like it. But, but you have that right. But don't behave like Ted Nugent and shove it in everybody's face uh, and be obnoxious uh, about it. His book, Kill a Gorilla, please. You know, really, I think, uh, and he says it was so much pride. Yeah, know. and he's very obnoxious. Uh, so, yeah, I just don't agree with that. In other words, if you're not a hunter like him, something's wrong with you. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't yeah. like you. And I, I've met a lot of people like that. If you if you don't agree with them, and if you don't do what they do, and if you're not like them, they um, they don't want to be a friend. Well, we have a friend that's like that. If you don't agree, he, he, he bails. That's, you don't do that. No, no, you would so don't agree with me, I will not talk to you anymore. Well, yeah. well you're a real true friend, aren't you? Well, you're supposed to accept... We're friends that met to me right now. You've met them, but I won't say names. Well, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to accept people's differences. It's my way, or I won't talk to you. Oh, I won't talk well, to you. aren't you a real man? You know? Yeah. Grow up. Yeah, it's, like, it's, up. Almost, it's almost like uh, an adult pouting and being a baby about it. it. It's almost almost like it is. I mean, you, you don't, it is adult power. You don't think like me. You don't it's not my way, so I'm, I'm yeah, gone. I'm you, don't agree, here. you don't agree with me, you know, and oh. I, I, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm bailing out. You don't shove things down somebody's throat. Like I told you, you know I played football almost 40 years. 37. I never come in and that's all I talk about. You never, hardly ever hear me talk about football. A little bit here, a snippet here and there. Don't shove it down people's throats. I'll talk about everything. Right? 
I guide you with my wisdom. I want you to learn, child. I'm like your Makiota. Think about that. What about people being so damn thin-skinned today? It's like so overly touchy and sensitive. Well, I'm not thin-skinned. I'm just the complete opposite, so I really don't care. You want to be thin-skinned, go right ahead. You've got a problem. Like I said, you can walk up, let me call me every name of the book, and I'd mm -hmm. probably laugh. Right. I could care less. I just don't care. I'm not thin-skinned. There's nothing you can say, because I don't know what the word offended means. And no one I know can define it for me. What does it mean? Can you define offended? What does it mean? Well, you know, I'm you offended. Know, I'm you, offended. What do you mean you're offended? What do you, what, what do you feel like when you're offended? Yeah, well, you don't you know. find words to be uh, that damaging because you, you have a strong self-esteem. Yeah, you know, too strong. You can't hurt me. Yeah. You can say you're an asshole. Sorry, you feel that way. Yeah. No? But, I mean, in the media, they jump all over comments and the that are said in the public eye. I mean, they go on right. and on and Why? on. They know what they're doing is wrong. They yeah. know they're dragging it all too far. Why do they keep doing it? Like, 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 uh, like, for instance, like, uh, getting back to the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. They're making this thing like it was an international terrorist. It's, it's, uh, it's being treated worse than a serial killer. Yeah. International terrorist. Uh, 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 event. He said it. He's a racist. We know that. Yeah. So what? So be it. You're a racist. What you said is wrong. I don't yeah. agree with others. Don't. I'm sure there are a lot of them that do agree with what he said. Where do we draw the line here? There, there's a there's a lot worse topics. Oh, a lot worse for, for the media said. that the media should be covering I mean, right this now. Is, this is real. basically what he said is nothing. It's his opinion. He was yeah. wrong. In my opinion, he was wrong. In others, again, they're probably applauding him. Yeah. So what? I mean, there's. It's no big deal. That this is this is like a gnat or a fly in the ointment. This is this is nothing compared to what's really going out there in the world. We've discussed over the months too. Yeah. It's gotten to the point, and you know this too. You can't even compliment a girl looking nice in a dress. That's sexual harassment now, and that should not be. And remember, I warned you, and I think I told you. It's getting to the point. It's going to come down to where charges will be filed, where girls will start complaining to cops or whatever, saying he looked at me funny. That's the next step. What's left? He looked at me funny. He looked, at me, he looked funny. at me funny. What do you mean by funny? If I was a cop, I'd say, well, he's, he's a clown. He's just like a piece of a nose. What do you want? I'd laugh. But it's getting that bad. Well, you can't do a thing anymore. You can't. And this is wrong. You can't ask a, a girl out on a, on a date, especially at work. You can't compliment her. You get fired for well, sexual harassment. You look nice. Oh, my God. That's just awful. That's harassment. How can you say that? So you're saying it's okay if I say, God, you look ugly. That's okay? Why didn't? Why doesn't the employer just simply tell the woman, well, he only complimented well, your dress? Why does the law say that, too? Right. Not just the employer. Why does the law say, hey, it's a compliment type of uh, you know. Or even, even somebody asking. Someone, someone on a date is 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 flattering in a way is a compliment. He has to be funny. He has to. <laughs> Where's he, that going to be drawn? He has to be in a funny. He has to be in that weird way. <laughs> so where do we draw the line here? Right. Enough. Enough. Where? Is, where right. and when does it stop? It could. Be, it could be anything. It could be frivolous lawsuits. How far will it go? How far will any of this? Nonsense How many of the people are in prison? for the things they did not do. How many ra uh, accused rapists serving time have been let off through DNA? They were innocent. But they never go after the girl for false charges, do they? Explain that one to me. Nobody can. Nobody will. That's a shame. Get. That's a shame. You took years out of someone's life. They said, why lie? You know why I think you know, they... they never raped. You never raped. You know why? You know why I think they keep you took years away from someone. You know why I think they keep people in prison for frivolous reasons? 
so the privatized prisons can can get free labor, practically slave no, labor no, for, so for corporations. They're so overcrowded that they need to get rid of some. They've got plenty of people, even if they get rid of the freeze. What about the marijuana uh, uh, people arrested for, for marijuana? That's ridiculous. People were arrested them back free. in the 70s for having one seat in their car. A good friend of mine, Russell, who I won't name where he works, uh, he's gone through it. You know? Yeah. Oh, no. I want to make an announcement. Guess what? You're pregnant. No, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I want to make an announcement. Seattle, Washington, the first place in the United States, the first American city to raise their minimum wage to $15 an hour. $15 an hour. Yeah. I, I got to salute them. Want to move? Want to move? Yeah. $15. An hour. $15, and you know, this is going to be a, 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 a snowball reaction, a domino reaction. Well, but also, a, a lot of other cities also, in the U.S. Obama wants to raise it to 10 10. What, what is that going to do? I don't know, but I don't understand. Why 10 and 10 cents? 10 10 wins. Why not $10 or 11 or whatever? But why $10 and 10 cents? But they're making a big stink about that, the Congress. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It's like, that's chump change, Bill. That's chump change. You can't live on that. Even 40 hours a week, which most most employers won't give you, is $400. Even Take the, taxes out, what do you have left? Even $11 an hour is chump change. Uh, have you have you heard the uh, the recent statement that got Sarah Palin in hot water? She said that, that waterboarding, uh, uh, potential... Waterboarding terrorists is like baptizing them. It's like by baptizing well, terrorists. I, I have to agree with that. If we can get information out, out of these people to save lives. But, as I've said to you before, it's kind of odd how over in these foreign countries they can behead people, char, burn bodies, char them, and hang them from bridges. Yeah, we're, we're, we're blamed for waterboarding. We're always the bad guys. So we're the ones that have to play yeah. by the rules. I say it's time we break a few rules. We're always the good guys, so to speak. The white hats. We have to play by the rules, and then people, the world condemns us for it. That's not fair. Yeah, because she was uh, the re religious organization felt that she was uh, insulting, <coughs> baptizing, oh, baptizing. Oh no, no, that's just a word she was using in this case. But uh, the, these religious organizations, uh, they're, so what they're doing is condoning. Headings, killing of women and children, innocent people, villagers, what have you. Uh, it's funny how we're the bad guys, but they can go ahead and do everything. It's okay. Yeah. This is wrong. You mean the, uh, the, the oh, there's that, there's that person, one of his fans interrupting again. Bless her heart. She's a sweetheart. Anyway, um, yeah, like they. One of your biggest fans. They, yeah, they, um, they do, they are very cruel, the Muslim extremists, in, in what they have done to Americans. Uh, so, uh, well, even so, Somali, remember, our one helicopter pilot's dead body, they dragged through the streets. Yeah. There's another example in another part. Yeah. Well, there's a. Well, we're the bad guys. Ex Muslim extremists uh, recently in Africa was uh, shooting Christians, or they were murdering Christians in Africa. It's just, but we're the bad guys again. Yeah. Well, because just because Sarah Palin offended a group of people oh, by man. mentioning baptism. I'm so tired of hearing that word offended. Nobody can really tell me what offended, being offended feels like. What do you mean you're offended? Because I'll be honest with you, nothing offends me. Nothing. Yeah. I don't like certain things. I don't like this. I don't get angry or upset. I don't feel offended. I don't know what offended feels like. Like, ooh, I'm embarrassed and shocked. Don't be so thin-skinned, everybody, okay? Let's get a little toughness to our eyes. Right. That's all I have to say. So until right. next time, everyone, one more. No, that'll be, that'll be good. No, we'll, we'll, we'll be back with more of William H. Moore the Third. Okay, we are here with William H. Moore the Third. And uh, now, uh, recently, a couple weeks ago, one or two weeks ago, there was an article concerning uh, the U.S. government taking, I believe, Coca-Cola to court for only putting one percent uh, yeah, uh, pomegranate? Uh, pomegranate? Uh, palm juice or whatever their name is. Oh, I remember. 
0.2 percent actual palm, uh, pomegranate juice in it. Wow, that, I, I know that brand. Palms. It, it's a palm something or other. Yeah. So people, people that think they're purchasing pomegranate juice are are well, only. You, you are. You're just getting very little. One to two percent, right? No, point two percent. Point two percent. I'm not right. I could be wrong, but I believe it was point two percent. That's like that's like the, a Spanish woman telling me in Colombia, if you buy a whole wheat bread, they they're selling white bread with one whole grain, oh, I I one whole you. grain of a wheat. Years ago, I was at a place, a well-known chain, and their can of three bean chili was on sale. And I asked the managers because I know all of them. I said, "How is your three bean chili?" I said, "Oh, it's really good." So I bought a can. Well, they didn't lie. It had three beans. Maybe I got a defective can, but literally it had three beans in it and all the sauce. And I, said, I, said, I said the next day, I said, you've got to be, I said, well, it lived up to its name. I said, I mean, I wasn't upset or anything, but it really people. Yeah, know? but it's kind of, it's kind of a slap in the face to the customer. I mean, you know, I mean, yes, it's funny. No, we're not lying. It's, we're not lying. It, it, yeah, but you're also jipping and screwing over your customer. Yeah, don't mince words, so to speak. You know what I mean? With Well, we didn't lie. Well, we know that, but still, you know, most people don't understand your language. You call it palm juice or whatever, and then it's only got point something or something percent. You th they think they're buying pure palm juice, and they're not. And palm, that's not right. Yeah, palm is meaning pomegranate. And I, I would assume a lot of these people are buying this stuff for health issues, too, like yogurts, and they want to make sure yeah. they're getting the proper uh, active, active culture or what have you of the, uh, I guess, the probiotics, right? Probiotics, which are very, very good for you. Or they might, or somebody with the gout might want to get some black, yeah. black cherry juice yeah. for, for uric acid crystals, <clears throat> and they're only, they find out they're only getting 0.1% of, uh -huh. of black cherry you juice. Don't cheat people. Don't lie to people. Really. Yeah. It's, uh, I personally, if I was a CEO, you know how ethical you've known me 30 plus years how ethical i am when i was designing and bringing super protective fortune forward blah 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 but very that's why so many people wanted to wanted to work and, and deal with us they said i heard great things about you guys meeting my partners at the time before they screwed things up because reputation gets around these guys are great to deal with it, fun to deal with, and they won't cheat you. And we yeah. have. I mean, wouldn't you consider that very short term thinking as opposed to long term? Short term, you'll make a buck. Long term, you go out of business, won't make any more bucks. Well, you'll get bad word of mouth advertising. Can, can you make, do you want a customer one time, or do you want a guy coming back frequently for years and years down the road? And his family and his friends. Yeah, you screw him one time, but he doesn't return again. I, mean, I wouldn't. I, we've all been places. I guess we'll never go back to. I mean, if I found out that my so-called pomegranate juice is mostly uh, high fructose corn syrup and, and, and has filler, cheap filler, like high fructose corn syrup and grape juice, I said, where's where's the pomegranate? It's like saying, where's, like the old lady that used to say, where's the beef? There is a brand, I can't remember their name, and they're in Whole Foods, and I guess other health food places maybe. It is 100% pure. The one I got was a cranberry juice for my father. For urinary tract infection. Tra this was one of and they even had a warning on it. Dilute with water. This is extremely potent and very, very strong. And it was bitter because it was pure, nothing but cranberry juice. You look at the ingredients, cranberry juice. No right. fillers, no apple juice to add yeah. sweetness to it or anything like that. Like that it was pure. Well, Same with their, their blueberry and their grapefruit. It was all real. Yes, you pay a little bit more, but you're getting the real deal. You know where I found pure pomegranate juice? In a lot of Middle Eastern stores. Because pomegranate is very popular in the Middle East. Now, one thing I don't know about, do, in, they in make, do they make a real pure acai juice? And what about a goji berry juice? Or would you be like you know, that's a good question. How They're out there, but how are pure? They but how pure are they? I would imagine Whole Foods would have pure ones. I've seen acai and um, and goji. So they do have juices. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Uh, H Mart, the, the Korean chain, Korean markets, have a super concentrate pomegranate vinegar that you 
must dilute with water. They have what? They strong. have blueberry, wild blueberry. They have pomegranate. Think of the health benefits you're getting. Yeah, I mean vinegar is is already an ancient health tonic in itself. Apple cider vinegar. Been around for centuries, if not thousands. Of years. I just read a, a huge article about. About apple cider vinegar, all the medicinal well, accounts for apple cider not vinegar. Just internally, but topically. Yes. Bee stings, yes. rashes, eczema, uh, psoriasis. It's great for all that stuff. I've got a friend. Detox. A friend of mine. He is an American, but he spent seven or eight years in Japan for his company. And and uh, he's really ever since I learned about it over there. He goes every day. I put apple cider vinegar in my hair. Leave it in for a half hour. Before I shower it out because it does smell strong. Yeah, yeah. Before I shower it out, and my hair, he said, like, it just has it never been better. Well, in Japan, they have a very medicinal vinegar that's called black vinegar. I, I'm not I've sure. Heard of black I have vinegar. to investigate and research what is black vinegar. I know their Japanese rice vinegar is phenomenal. Yeah, no, this is even more potent so. and much. This is black vinegar. And it's supposed to be very medicinal. Well, for people out there listening, is it black or is it clear? What is it color wise? Well, I saw the, I saw a photo of it. It is black. Oh, it is black. In other words, just a name. Yeah. Black. I found in the Asian market right now at home, I have a bottle of sugar cane vinegar from sugar cane juice, and I have a bottle of coconut vinegar. Now, you know how medicinal coconut is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, but, you're, but even apple cider, if it's raw, unfiltered, Third organic apple cider well, vinegar. Cloudy or the, some people get nervous when they say, oh, this uh, bottle's awful cloudy. I tell them, the cloudier the better. That's your amino acid. That's called the mother. The mother of the vinegar. You don't want a, a filtered or yeah. a, a filtered pasteurized vinegar. Yeah. They're still good, but not as nearly potent as the ones with all the cloud. Well, even juice is pasteurized. You yeah. kill all yeah. the li the living enzymes. Yeah. In, in the natural juice. Which we've discussed a bunch about which products are best, the ones that grind the entire fruit, skin, seeds, and all. Right. Because nothing gets tossed out. You drink it all. Like if you use the Ninja, you're the getting ninja, the whole thing. It emulsifies everything. You're getting every 100% of everything right. that little fruit can give you. You're taking it all. Yes. But, but it's like, yes, uh, uh, you're getting the best, best of both worlds. You're getting the medicinal power of a a vinegar of pomegranate plus you're getting the medicinal value of the pomegranate and for you, you ladies out there did you know that pomegranate is known as the best backup for women who um, are low in estrogen and women who had hysterectomies their ovaries removed there are phytoestrogens in pomegranate strong enough to uh, help women that had a hysterectomy and good for men with enlarged prostate. And the other thing they say on the planet, one of the strongest things you should eat, it's not in juice form, I don't believe, is chia seeds. Super powerhouse All in nutrition. Eat them barely, a handful, sprinkle them on hot food or cold food, it doesn't destroy potency of the ears. Put them on anything and everything, they are the incredible richest, for you. It's, it's extremely high in, yeah. in, in, in complete vegetable uh -huh. protein. It's yes. very high in calcium. Yes. Very high. They are phenomenal. And it is the richest source of, of vegetarian omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah. Well, chia seeds are other. Yeah. If you yeah. get those in your daily regimen, you know, use chia seeds, acai, goji berries. Uh, you know, if you care about your health, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, you might pay a little bit more, but what price do you put on your health? Uh, they, I, I, I'm taking aronia, aronia berry, which is a native I've never American. Heard of that. It's a native. Of American blackberry called chokeberry, and uh, it's even it's much stronger than even uh, acai as okay, an antioxidant. You don't, you don't care much press about. It. I, I, I read it on uh, in a website called Natural News that it, it, it blows away uh, bilberry uh, black currants. You know, for people <clears throat> people that have macular degeneration. Oh, would you get something like said, Whole Foods maybe? Or? No, it's available. In the, some vitamin companies make a concentrate in a, in a capsule, but I get the, the the pure tea from Poland. They have a pure concentrate tea. In a bag? It, it comes in bags. Yes, I, I get it. Where do you get it? Only two ninety nine. I get it at a a, a local uh, international market in Garfield, New Jersey. 
Right. And it's uh, it's it, called what again? It, it's a ar aronia. The, Never heard of that. The berry is called aronia, but it's it's supposed to be very high in uh, orac and antioxidant power. But getting back to the wrong attitude in business. Short term, buyer beware. short term will always screw you in, in, in your business future. It posts a long term, and they and they really. Uh, That's sad to hear that because I respect both Coke and Pepsi. They're great corporations, but they can afford to have the very best. Of course, they don't need to really cut corners like this. So maybe maybe a little uh, kick in the butt or a wake up call every once in a while could be helpful. Too, so let's hope so. And 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 you know what? They some of these people are proud of themselves that, that they are they're getting away with it and haven't been caught yet. But what happens when you do get caught? Well, even if you're not getting caught, can you live with yourself knowing you're cheating people? Yeah. I mean, do, do you want that? I mean, y years ago, can you look yourself in the mirror, and be proud of what you're doing. Years ago, many years ago, the vitamin shop, uh, which is a nationwide chain now. They got caught lying about their uh, soft palmetto berry extract, their own brand. What was in the capsule was not on the label, or vice versa. What was on the label was not in the capsule. You just dis disclose only the ingredients on the ingredient listing. That's yeah. all that can be in there. But guess what? Somebody took it to a laboratory. They took uh, more than one brand, and the vitamin shop brand failed at that time. And they acted like you know, oops! It, it was it was a laboratory. In other words, Phoenix Laboratories. They at the time they were making, well, doing uh, private labeling for the vitamin. Like I just said a yeah. few moments ago, maybe it was good kicking the button a wake up call to improve the quality of their brands because right. they're too good a company right. too. They don't need to be doing. But you this. see, you, you see know? what you see what happens when a CEO thinks that way at the beginning. Well. I'm sure the CEO should have known. Maybe he didn't, but he sure should have. You know? Or maybe Phoenix Laboratories was cheating the vitamin shop. You never know. I mean, that's why you have court cases and everything. You've got to find out really. <laughs> oh. Russ. Russ. <laughs> Anyways, I'm I'm sorry for that. Uh, uh, what, what, one of one of William H. Moore the Third's uh, female fans saw him and 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 waved at him to say hello. He, you know he's very popular, and uh, you know, but it's really it's really sad that that a person running a company doesn't do always what's best for his customers. What just happened with GM? Oh, he had a rico And some people are dead because of this. Wow. And they knew about this years earlier. You know, it, elaborate on, on what I happened. I forget what it was, a faulty bit. ignition switch or something. But it caused a number of accidents or something happened. I forget what it was. But people died because of this. Had they fixed it, it was estimated it would have cost GM $1.9 million. Now look at the lawsuits that are going to take place. It could be billions. In the lawsuits, right? Yeah. Wow. Billions. Short term, long term. Had you done it immediately, you know? And wasn't GM almost ready to go belly up and they got a bailout from GM, the government? GM and Chrysler got a bailout. Ford was the only one that did not accept the bailout. Well, they didn't really need it. Ford was doing well. What's that well. tell you? Yeah, that's pretty darn good. We don't need it, but thank you. I mean, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I what does them. that say about the attitude I, of Ford? I admire them for that. You know, you know, and uh, you know, GM really was floundering and needed the bailout. They get the bailout, and what do they do? They pull something like this. And, and all the uh, the recalls Toyota's been having lately. I don't, I don't over the past couple. Of years. I was shocked when I heard about the first Toyota recall. It's been going on for a number of years now. But something you know. else, something else, and something else. Ha you know hear anything bad about Honda. They've had a few, but nothing major like yeah. these. Mercedes just had a recall. You don't really hear much about a Nissan recalls. I never. Uh, and the luxury, all three luxury divisions, you don't hear about big, like Acura, Lexus, and uh, Infiniti. Well, Infiniti, really Infiniti's made by Nissan. Uh, uh, 
Lexus is made by Toyota, and Acura is, is Honda. Is Honda. Yes. Acura is Honda. So those are upscale brands. Yeah, Europe. yeah, yeah. Like in other words, if you if you buy if you own a um, a Nissan Maxima, the Infiniti is like a luxury step above. Yeah, but where the Maxima is pretty luxurious in its own right anyway. I mean, you know, yeah, it's a, that's a really true. nice car. So yeah, you're you're not yeah. really you're not really losing a lot by by buying a Maxima or an Altima, you know. All the companies make pretty, pretty good cars nowadays because they've gotten kicked by first the Japanese coming in a few dec decades ago and kicking the Americans butt for a while, and now the now the South Koreans coming in with Kia. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Hon uh, Hyundai, Kia, Kia, Hyundai are excellent cars. Plus, you're getting a think about this a ten year, two hundred thousand mile warranty. That's pretty and a bumper. To Bumper, that's hard to beat. I've seen the Kia commercials. Well, they're great cars. Yes. It just shows with the right administration in there saying, we're not going to build cheap. Now, now, do you see, uh, if Japan wanted to, they could have rested on their laurels and and looked at South Korea and says, ah, ha, South Korea, we don't have to worry about them. Well, but you know something? Look how fast South Korean companies grew. Well, it's just cars. What about the big electronics giants, LG and Samsung? Yeah, exactly. Well, what's the famous smartphone now? The Samsung Galaxy? Galaxy 5 or S or something like yeah. that. I'm not sure. But they, I mean, they're, they're tremendous companies. Which, which proves if you're big, never rest on your laurels and get cocky. Well, we, well part of what we were striving for in Super Tech, in our, our manual was we want to pursue and strive always for Perfection. And somebody said, but you, you can never achieve perfection. I said, exactly. So we'll always have a goal. 24 hours. can't be achieved. 24 hours. So we'll keep trying yeah. to improve, trying to get better, trying to get better. Yeah. We'll always have a goal. 20, 24 hour of research and development, yeah. nonstop. You know? Constantly going. Constantly. You know, and every yeah. ship that takes over from the ship before just keeps on, keeps well, on researching. Continue, research. Especially with the storage now they come right in, punch it in, there's where they left off. Here's where we go. And here's here's what the previous yeah. ship what it's they right accomplished. For you, ready to roll. Ready to roll. Just keep on going. Keep yeah. keep on passing the torch. Well, then you have some scientists that are so dedicated they don't realize it's time to go home. They just want to stay on it. Like, you know, I'm not ready to go home yet. They'll stay there. They'll put their oomph into it. 110 percent. Oh, by the way, I, I watched the new Cosmos for the first time on Channel 5. Isn't that a fantastic show? It's a great show. Uh, awesome show. I think Seth MacFarlane pro produces that. I believe you're right. Yeah, I'm pretty it, sure you're right. Yeah, they were talking about stars, about the birth of stars, the death, of, death of stars. Everything. Every show is a blockbuster. <laughs> it, it keeps you, it's so informative. It the keeps other, you at the, the edge of your seat. The other along the same lines, kind of, through the wormhole with Morgan Freeman and his folks. That's excellent. About excellent the wormhole. Yeah. Well, about a lot of other things, the galaxy too. Well, what 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 Cosmos was discussing was things like uh, supernovas, hypernovas. Mm -hmm. that, you know what happens after the death of a star? You have something left called a pulsar. It's hard you to have believe the, what the black are. holes. Yeah. The black hole. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable what's out there. It's hard to believe you're sitting here and we wonder what's going on as we're talking. It's never just dead. Stars are dying. Always happen. Suns are dying. Some are forming. New planets are being forming. formed. New really yeah. what's going on on other planets. I mean, uh, yeah, I didn't realize that a nebula, a nebula creates new stars. Mm -hmm. So you have new stars dying, like skin cells. You have new stars dying, new stars being created, it's being, amazing, being uh, born. I mean, we're really so insignificant. This one little planet, which is really one grain of sand that from all the world's yeah. beaches. It's just one grain of sand. Yeah. That's all we are. Really and, and this is this is why science should never be oppressed. Well, the other thing you have to realize, too, I don't know most people don't realize this, we, we only know is on this planet, about 10% of the species on this planet. Well, there's always new species. 90% being... of species we don't know about yet. Yeah, so what is out there, Jim? And they're still being discovered. So what's out there, maybe? Species of animals. Different kinds plant of animals, life. plant life. Think of the cures. Fish. That one of the best cures for ovarian cancer is came from the yew tree. I, I heard about that. Yes. 
Uh, U meaning Ash Y-E-U. Y yeah. 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 Uh, Ash White Willow plant. White Willow yeah, plant. I mean, so much people. Who knows any of them? So our oceans, who knows what's down there? Did you know, you know, did like you know so there much. are cancer-destroying properties found in some scorpion venom? Well, look at spider. Uh, spider silk is stronger than uh, uh, Kevlar and what have yes. you. And if, if we, they're working on getting that and weaving, weaving it synthetically. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, they, they have, have a plant the insect kingdom, the, the living organism yeah. creature. There's so much to offer yeah. out there. I mean, even bee venom, there's a, there's a homeopathic product called Apis. People with severe arthritic pain, they, well, they the actually take bee, bee venom. The other three important bee products, bee propolis, royal jelly, and bee uh, pollen. 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 Those three are phenomenal. Well, propolis is a powerful anti yeah. antibiotic and it's antiseptic. Man, well, honey in itself is a phenomenal food. It's the only food that will never, ever rot or spoil. Yeah. Think of why. It must have some amazing ingredients in it. No shelf life. It goes forever. Amazing. Absolutely it amazing. It will never spoil on you. Well, William H. Morrow, it was a we'll pleasure continue. having you. We'll continue this. It's okay? a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Jimmy. And until next time, everybody. Bye bye. Ah, there's that bye bye we all love. Bye bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. To reduce the top marginal tax rate to 28%. This is what I keep on telling people. Once again, creating the environment for great wealth to be concentrated in the hands of a few. And enabling those few to contribute heavily to and, in effect, by our elected officials. Every subsequent president has followed Reagan's democracy-destroying policies, even Democrats. Yeah, the sellout Democrats. And although President Obama campaigns as a populist and laments the unfairness of the American economic system, he, he like Bill Clinton, has governed to protect the businessmen and corporations that contributed hundreds of millions of dollars to his campaigns. So it should come as no surprise that Obama's actions have resulted in the top 1% now having as much wealth as the total, total of the bottom 90%. Well, it's not news to me, but it definitely seems like it's news to all the teabaggers out there. Does that sound like it's comes from God, or was that man-made? What, this situation that Ronald Reagan uh, created? Yeah. It's man-made. Well, gee whiz, then it can be unman-made, can it? Sure, of course. Aha! Uh -huh. God would never... Uh, um, uh, take from the poor and give to the rich. It's the other way around that he commands. Correct. You know, you might as well call the middle class the poor because many of them are rapidly becoming the poor. 
Well, if the 95% don't even own crapola, I wouldn't even divide them up into middle class and poor. They're yeah. all poor. I would call the middle class uh, an endangered, not threatened, an endangered species worldwide. <laughs> worldwide. Especially in the United States. And third world countries, you can forget about uh, the existence of the middle class. That's for sure. Because they're, they're possibly more corrupt, maybe in a different way, than the United States uh, Congress and Senate. Well, let's just hey. say Congress. Wherever money is, what is that? The sticketh to the nail? To the As the nail sticketh uh, between two stones, so does sin sticketh. Uh, to buying and selling. Thank you. Thank you. Something to that effect. Which means God's not too crazy about <coughs> capitalism. Well, God has his own economic policy. Which, which is not connected to any political party. That's correct. At all. That's correct. In weather reports, about rivers flooding. We often hear the term flood stage. I can picture a river about to overflow, but what does, say, 20 feet above flood stage mean? Well, the first word I hear is crest. Well, that's, the, that's the top of the riverbed where the river meets the flood land. I would say it, the river's cresting. I would say it's you know it's it, it, yeah. it's about to overflow its container. Right. That's like yeah. if you're you got I a kitchen say. sink and you got a plastic container in there and you're 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 slowly pouring water to fill it up and then it gets to the top and right before it's ready to overflow, that would be crest. I can't envision a wall of water 20 feet high. Uh, those well, there were waves out in the ocean 30 feet high, you know? Yeah, during yeah. the storm, sure. Yeah. The tsunami, of course, is much higher. Oy. They can't envision it? Well, those that, ha that have been through tsunamis could envision it if they survived. Every river has a flood stage at any given point along its banks. The term refers to the elevation at which water above the usual level will create a hazard, cause damage, or interfere with daily life. If you live on the ground right next to a river and it rises two feet above flood stage in your area that means two feet of water in your house it's another big problem here in the northeast people with basements they have to get sump pumps sometimes the sump pump can't keep up with the uh, flooding if the river is five feet above flood stage, you'll get five feet of water. If you live on a nearby hill, your property might not be affected until the river rises ten feet above flood stage. But even one foot above flood stage means something is flooding. That may be a road you need to evacuate if the river continues to rise. So people who live near rivers need to be aware of all the relevant flood stage numbers in their communities. You know what I have to say about that? I believe.
believe that there are certain areas on earth where um, man was not meant to live uh -huh. near. Like, uh -huh. uh, like uh, uh, at the base of volcanoes, you know, near volcanoes, uh, uh, right on the beach, right on the ocean, and right near the river. What about these banks, people? Riverfront. In Arkansas and Wyoming and Oklahoma and these places that were just hit with these tornadoes again. How come they don't have um, sp specific uh, types of homes like they have in South Florida for, for hurricanes? Uh, cement block and steel homes. How come there's no basements, you know, a uh, 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 um, tornado shelter in the basement in a basement of every cement block and steel home probably because they cost like five thousand dollars in um in oklahoma and kansas and, and the in places like this how come they're not you know aren't the insurance companies like uh hollering about paying out every time a tornado touches down yeah. Uh, like they did in Florida, and they said, look, the houses, the homes have to be built a certain way, or else you're not getting any uh, property insurance, real estate and insurance. why isn't science Home insurance. Why aren't scientists seeking a way to interrupt tornadoes? I'm sure there is a way that you can prevent the funnel cloud from hitting the earth. Well, they have harp. I'm sure there's a way. They Maybe can... that's causing a lot of this crap too, you know. We don't know. We don't know. Or all, all I know is for the past two uh, spring seasons, we've been getting hit in the United States with, uh, with an unusual amount, high amount of tornadoes have been touching down and uh, I mean, powerful ones too. Mm -hmm. F4, F5s. Um, you know, the guy, a man uh, that lives out there, he just had his home rebuilt after it was demolished last year. And guess what? It got demolished again. Oh, jeez. So the point is. The point is, as you said, there are places where human beings should not live. Hey. You ever hear of hemp crete? It's it's far superior than than uh, concrete. Concrete. Yeah, it brings the cost down too. Hemp crete block and steel homes, hurricane like hurricane resistant homes, with but. a basement. Uh, I don't know what we're. There's a high water level on the ground in, in Oklahoma and Kansas, but have a shelter. Every home should have a tornado shelter. Let's say in a basement. All right, and uh, it's all common sense, Dr. Bill. It's all common sense, all these solutions. Well, as I say, you know, but, uh... But no, they have trillions of dollars to, to which they approve the, uh, more corporate welfare, by the way, the Congress. They oh, have you trillions... Mean Sandy, Sandy, corporate welfare that they not, hasn't, not just been, say, hasn't been getting to the people who need it? That's just for, one example. What, 18 months? That's just one small example. I'm talking about, in general, they're, 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 they're um approving billions if not trillions more corporate welfare corporate, yeah they just did the other day corporate handouts but they don't have money for anything that involves the the country and the people the mainstream they have no money for that medicare social security medicaid no yeah. we don't have money for that stuff Foods. give it all to exxon mobil not just Exxon Mobil. All right, food stamps is a drop in a bucket. It is a mere gnat on a, on a flood on, a, on an elephant's ass. 
food stamps for veterans is 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 a crime. It's smaller than 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 a handful of chicken feed, and and it's immoral and it's it's despicable. But they don't have money to give food stamps for veterans and their families. But they have trillions to give away every year to the fat cats, to they, corporations. They believe those people should have died on the battlefield and made things easy for us. Okay? So they're simply pawns in corporate greed. In corporate I, I, Kissinger said so. In corporate greed, they're pawns. For crying out loud. Well, even Jesse Ventura admits it. Gary what? Noble admits it. They're pawns. Yeah. And they keep you fighting for our freedom. We're fighting them over there so they don't come over here. Uh, it's stupid. 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 I used to say just ignorant and misinformed, but now I just say downright. Stupid, moronic, numbskull teabaggers. And guess what? That keep on believing these stupid lies that are obviously not true. And guess what? Fox News. Fox. Those, same, those same people that are defending that flag want to secede from the Union. I right, like to see Talk them. about cognitive dis dissonance. I like to see them survive without being Jeez. connected to the Union. They didn't do it in the Civil War. You know, people take for granted, people that run their mouth, right-wingers, really take for granted how much government is needed in their everyday lives. Without government uh, departments and government services, there's a lot of things that they enjoy now that they won't have anymore. That's correct. Well, all the southern states, they get back more than they pay in taxes from the federal government. Yeah. Okay. Well, me and Billy Morrow were discussing the fact that, yes, even the, the cost of labor is tax deductible. And they of squawk, course, they ladies. squawk, and they cry, and they bellyache, and they bitch and moan. Unions, unions, all benefits, blah, blah, blah. fringe benefits, etc., are all tax deductible. Yeah. They don't want to give you anything if they you're want part their, of the mainstream. They want their profit margins as high as they can go. So they they literally are pinching okay. pennies. At your expense, they're pinching your ass so at the way on uh, on the way out the door. Yeah, it's it, it's it. Look, uh, it's just gonna hit the fan real soon. That's all I have to say. Governor Christie Me? is determined to blame the state's financial woes on the hard-working, dedicated public employees, present and retired. Because he wants to privatize everything. A fatty buckle. The budgetary problems of this state are due to the abuse and mismanagement of state finances by political leaders and their appointed friends and supporters. Well, Republicans are number one for crony capitalism. According to Christie, as a retired public employee, it is my fault that the state doesn't have enough funds to pay its obligations, fund the cancer research, and give tuition assistance. I paid 8.5% of my salary into the pension system for 26 years with the expectation that through the proper management of those funds my contractual rights would provide me with a financially secure future. Uh, oh really? I, 
This future is pretty financially secure. Ain't that something? And he's a public employee too. What is he bitching about, man? He's he's a multi-millionaire. There was the expectation that the state oh. would fulfill its contractual responsibilities by making its required contributions due to the rating. R-A-I-D-E-I-N-G of the employee public pension systems years ago by Governor Christy Whitman and her Whit stupid 30% tax cut. Christy Whitless, the one that privatized the Department of Motor Vehicles and it was a big fiasco. Well, she also did what she did here. You know what I mean? With the property taxes? That, yeah, she took it from the pension funds. Hey! She, she, they do that occasionally, these go, they, these uh, politicians. Well, they take they, money from one thing and put it in right. another. But there's one thing that they don't take, it, and that is uh, taxes from the, their rich friends. Oh, God, God forbid. God forbid we should actually you know, get a 94% uh, tax rate. Like it was during, was that Truman and Eisenhower? Well, we just read it before. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Either Truman or, or, or Eisenhower and uh, what was the tax rate during FDR? We just read it, 94%. Alright, so it's 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 not just Truman Eisenhower, it's FDR Truman Eisenhower. Yeah, that's correct. Those Don't three forget. administrations, yeah. Uh, FDR was in there nearly uh, 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 16 years. So was four that, times he was reelected. Four, four terms. Yeah. Was he the only four-term president? Oh, oh, yeah, the Republicans got to change that later on. What is that, the tw uh, 22nd Amendment? I people believe. love them. The the people love Amendment. them, you know? Yeah. Uh, Whitman, the failure to repay those funds and the continuing failure to make the required contributions by the state, county, and local governments, the pension systems are in their current state of health. Public employees deserve decent wages and benefits. Who is... Ow, I nearly I bit my cheek. Who is Christie to say that our salaries, benefits, and pensions are too high? Due to many years of hard-fought contractual rights, we are able to achieve a decent standard of living for ourselves and our families. Christie needs to stop trying to cause an insurrection against public workers. Mm. After all... Isn't Christy a public employee? Yeah, well... He, 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 he. And won't he receive the pension and benefits after he leaves office? Hey, aren't Republicans the worst hypocrites of all? Yeah. I think so. It's obvious. That, you know, I have, a, I have a gut feeling that Franklin Delano Roosevelt might might be one of the uh, 144,000 elect. I, I'd vote for him. I think he's... He well, would what qualify. the hell would that have to do with the elect? 144,000 elect. I mean, as far as... As far as... Just because of the person. His... the hell is that? Hairball? Sounds like a cat with a hairball. hairball. Just because a person does some good or tries to do some good or a lot of good in the world, right, has nothing to do with Christianity or being one of the 144,000 or etc. Jesus does not pray 
for the world. Well, the world is the devil. Well, he's got to pick 144,000. The world is the devil's. Right. He is king. Yes. He has a throne. Here in the world. So why would Jesus pray? He is allowing the devil to have his stay. Right. Because God does not believe in rebellion. Right. And and, and things of that nature. Well, you believe there, Satan does not have a throne right now in heavenly places like the... He uh, does not allow to go there anymore. Well, then I don't know why these uh, evangelical born-againers think that they always quote something in the Bible where he's in, uh, he sits in, in uh, heavenly places or something. That was at the time of Job. You know? He was speaking yeah. with the God at the time. Yeah. But he's not there anymore. He was thrown down to earth and they are restrained here Cast on the earth. I mean, God has to use some criteria in choosing the 144,000. I'm sure there's some criteria. Many of them have been chosen already. I'm sure they were. They are. Yes. I'm well, sure they are. But they have nothing to do with politics. They have nothing, or their politics. They, they have nothing to do with somebody just doing a whole bunch of good works. What the Christians of this world have forgotten, the traditional Christians, the counterfeit Christians, they don't understand what God demands of them. He demands to be first in their lives. And you do for him, not he does for you. That's not the attitude that you must have yeah. to be one of the hundred forty. Which includes pounds. money. Which includes he he's he's supposed to be first, which includes a head of money. Which Republicans, which Republicans do first not, is first. Do not apply. Yeah. Yeah. The so-called real Christians. Because do, do the not apply Republicans, to what the uh, the uh, God is their money, and the bank is their. Jeez, uh, I forgot my own saying. Church. Church. Uh, yeah. Don't be a chooch. Don't be a chooch, you chooch. Church. How are we doing on time? We got, got one time more for one. All right. <laughs> this is concerning the Pledge of Allegiance. It has been in the papers lately. Oh, brother. The Treaty of Tripoli. Who knew it was a landmark document? Written by President John Adams when our nation was in its infancy. People are pointing to this as proof that we were established as a godless nation in the argument about whether the Pledge of Allegiance should include the phrase under God. The line they excerpt is as the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. No. This treaty was an agreement forged between a nation of laws and a Muslim theocracy. Although Christianity was by and large the religion practiced by Americans, we were not a Christian nation, certainly not in the theocratic sense. Nothing could be further from the truth. With centuries of strife between Christians and Muslims, Adam showed the people of Tripoli that religion was not a prerequisite for diplomatic relations with the United States. However, while we are not a Christian nation, we most certainly established our nation with the rights endowed upon us by the Creator most decidedly a reference to God in the Declaration of Independence and Christianity certainly influenced our system of laws. Yeah, and it should never have. 
The Treaty of Tripoli in 1797 is one of the first instances of our nation demonstrating the religious tolerance that was its central founding principle. Some 220 years later, the actions are taken by the American Humanist Association to remove under God from the pledge is anything but tolerant. Mm. Shouldn't be there in the first place. No, and therefore, no it and, shouldn't be there. And I believe it was 1960 or so when it was put there. 1954 was the uh, the other one uh, in, in, on the money. In, in God We Trust or something. Hey, um, a group of people or political party has no right forcing uh, God on everyone, especially if they do not know what's really in the Bible to begin with. So you have to, you have to know who God is before you push him on yeah. everyone. Yeah. And everyone pays taxes, even atheists. You? And, and, and any reli all religions pay taxes if they're American citizens. Unless you're rich, of course, then you don't pay taxes. That's correct. Yeah. That's what, 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 what was her name with the, over there in New York with the uh, the, the real estate man? Leona Helmsley? Leona Helmsley, yes. Uh, uh, Only the poor. Taxes are for the poor That's people, correct. or for the little people. That's correct. The rich don't pay taxes. Well, she was right. <laughs> <laughs> because why? Because they can. Because the. the, the Politicians have a price, you know. Uh, well, hey, proof that politicians do not have to take bribes is uh, when Jesse Ventura became governor of Minnesota. He refused to meet with any lobbyists. Period. Yep. Well, other people, uh, uh, Rand Paul, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, all. Uh, John Boner, all these other jabronis, they don't have to meet with lobbyists. Uh, 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 blue dog well, Democrats course. don't have to meet with lobbyists. Oh, yeah, but of course, they're never going to get elected either. You mean they won't get any campaign funds? That's correct. They would have to run on a low budget, like Jesse Ventura did. Yeah, that could only work on a uh, small scale. Like governor. Like governor of Minnesota. Minnesota. Not New York. Oh, you think it takes takes some moolah in New of York moolah to run in New yeah. York? Are you kidding me? Yeah. My so God. what do you think? You're done with that reading? That reading is done, and I don't think we have time to get into another one. Then we will take a break. It is now time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delay, known as lunch. And uh, next, I will join... Our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, I will meet with him, followed by our promo commercial, and then we will return back to the uh, balance of this show. All right. All right. Uh, the balance of the show. Okay. We're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow the Third, for uh, the show we did, myself and and him, for meeting with me. I salute you. It was excellent, and of course, the promo had a very important message, um, and that is. The very best way to join our organization is to go to newslettercensor.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. Now, as Dr. Bill is having his lunch, his spaghetti and meatballs, uh, organic whole wheat spaghetti. That's what it is. That's what it is. And a uh, very special meatball recipe um, and homemade sauce of course nothing for 
nothing but the best for the newsletter censor team. I was discussing how, um, you know, the tricks that are used in uh, the restaurant business and you know, in general, even in retail, how they they play with words. Uh, I mentioned uh, this person on my friends list from Singapore went to uh, Mykonos in Santa Marini, uh, Greece. And, you know, uh, she showed photos of um, dining at this uh, Greek restaurant located in the tourist area. And, of course, when you're in a tourist trap, you pay tourist trap prices on for everything. And you get less for your money because they got you. And see, see the thing with capitalism is if they know you have no other options, they stick it to you because they figure where are you going to go. So she showed photos of the, of the dinner, of the entrees, and of course, like the chefs on the Food Channel, there's a whole lot of China to stare at. There's a whole lot of empty space on that plate, and not too much food. The portions are small, and uh, just like they brag on the Food Channel, all these chefs, they all want to be artisans. They, they all want their dinner to look like a painting, you know, with the fancy swirl of the sauces, different colors. You know, and so everybody wants to be an artisan as an excuse to jack up their prices. In the old days, it was called a clay pot, a clay flower pot. Now they call it terracotta. Mm -hmm. They might, you might have a little design in the clay, but nevertheless, it's still clay. Okay, they jack up the price. Oh, it's terracotta. A pizzeria would sometimes call themselves a trattoria. Hey, it's still a pizzeria. Mm -hmm. Of course, they use a fancy Italian word. Yeah? Okay. Higher prices. Uh, um, roasted meat. A restaurant would use the word, uh, if it's connected with uh, Spain or Mexico, they'll call it carne asado. An excuse to make it fancy. It's just meat that's broiled or roasted. Carne asado. Asado. So they'll use French words like che something, you know, capital C H E Z. You know, they'll They'll use uh, French words, Latin words, Italian words, so Americans get suckered into uh, thinking it's uh, a fancy European product or a fancy European establishment. And these are all excuses that they use to uh, screw you, to... Um, price gouge you and charge ridiculously high way robbery prices. <clears throat> Just some accurate observations. And you know, of course, they are all inducted into the Chisler's Hall of Shame <clears throat> along with um, uh, what uh, uh, venting Vinnie Blake was talk talking about, about companies that do not give merit raises to their employees anymore. Shame on them also. <clears throat> and uh, William Morrow, when he mentioned companies that lie and mislead their public through advertising, like, let's say, Coca-Cola, who makes uh, the POM, P-O-M, uh, bogus pomegranate juice. I think it's Coke that makes that. P-O-M. With only one or two percent 
pomegranate juice in their product and the rest is all cheap sugary filler apple uh, and grape apple and grape and god forbid i haven't read it but anytime you see high fructose corn syrup not only is it very bad for your health and not only uh, do cancer cells love to feed on that fructose, but it's cheap filler, it's bad for you, and the government, a shame on not only Coca-Cola that makes the palm, but a shame on the, the FDA and USDA that, that allows companies to call it pomegranate juice with only one or two percent pomegranate in it. So shame on those government agencies. Um, I'm sure people are, are compensated for their uh, uh, unethical decisions in this wonderful capitalist society. It sucks. all for the fat cats. The American dream has always been for the fat cats and not for the poor or for the mainstream. Okay. Let me have a sip of my antioxidant rich tea. This is a special tea. The elixir of life that I made today. Actually, I made it last night. So when I, I repurposed it, it became really dark. The two main antioxidants, besides tea, of course, are uh, a tart black cherry and uh, aronia berry. Elder berries in here. Um, Another berry that's in here too. Some black currant, but most mostly uh, aronia, tart black cherry, and elderberry. Cool. Elderberry is very good as a, a antiviral uh, and immune system booster, particularly antiviral properties. Very good if you have a cold or flu. Um, let me know when you're finished because I have to mention something that's serious Ooh. before we go back to sinking our teeth into these readings. This is serious. It has to do with the word, uh, have you ever heard, have you ever read conspiracy theory articles concerning new pandemics? Mm-hmm. Well, the uh, the Saudi Arabian, uh, uh, I don't know if it's new or not, but the Saudi Arabian uh, MERS coronavirus mm -hmm. has touched down in the Midwest of the United States. Indiana. Indiana. There's no cure for the MERS corona. There is no vaccine for the MERS corona um, yet, and uh, they originally found it in camels. They, right. Camels tested positive for the MERS corona, and uh, it's starting to spread. I guess a lot of viruses, what do they do? They just take a plane flight? They take a flight? That's what it seems. This guy did. Yeah, we don't. Took a this. plane from Saudi Arabia, went to Chicago, and then the Indiana. Yeah, one one man. Mm -hmm. No cure, no vaccine. The MERS Corona virus. That's all I have to say. That's all you. Have. I have to say. Well, like 
the late great Carlton Fredericks, Carlton Fredericks used to say, um, you can take supplements, natural supplements, uh, or drugs, or what have you, or you can eat perfectly, but viruses, and even bacteria, have a tendency to come back stronger and build an immunity to the drug or antibiotic or whatever substance originally killed them or put them into remission. They have a tendency to mutate and come back stronger. And it's serious. It's something to be concerned about. Definitely. And that's all I have to say, unless you have something to add. I find that a double standard is applied to practitioner's time and patient's time. Oh, de definitely. Do practitioners, doctors think that their time is much more valuable than our time. Without fail. That's why they overbook. When I have an appointment with my doctor or dentist, I receive at least two phone calls, emails, text messages. Are you going to make it? Are you coming in? Reminding me of the appointment and requesting my promptness. Yeah. Yes, they do. All what? too frequently however. My appointment is not kept within a 30-minute window. I recognize that medical practitioners are faced with emergencies in addition to the paperwork they are now required to complete. Nonetheless, I always interpret their office's contact with me as an effort not to have their time being wasted by patients showing up late. Their time wasted? These same offices, however, have no problem at all wasting the time of their patients. No. If their phones work well enough to remind patients of their appointments, why don't they work when there's a delay? I have never received any contact from a medical practitioner advising me to come an hour later because they are running late. They are content to have me in their waiting room for that time instead. To me, their message is clear. My time matters. Yours doesn't. That's what the message is. That's what it is. Funny you mentioned that because I was having this very discussion with someone online uh -huh. yesterday. And why do they think that? Because they are elites. You're right. They are in a different caste. You, class. They are. They are uh, highly educated physicians professionals like lawyers are and so on and so on and you're not plus you're sick and you, you need them hmm. and they're in high demand because there apparently is not enough doctors around to handle the load of sick people otherwise waiting rooms would not be so jam-packed and with overbookings. Uh, uh, it's not 
unusual to uh, wait an hour or more sometimes for the doctor to actually see you. And when the doctor actually sees you... If he's there. Right. If he actually sees you, he might spend just uh, five minutes with you. Give or take. Fifteen minutes is too much. Oh, they, they want to expedite the, oh, yeah. the the visit as quickly they as possible. Those warm bodies in here. Yeah, the revolving door, right. <laughs> you know. Pfizer Incorporated, Eli Lilly and Company, and Novartis AG have dug an idea out of the pharmaceutical dustbin to create new medicines that are showing blockbuster potential against hard-to-treat forms of breast cancer. In findings reported on Sunday, Pfizer's drug called Palbociclib stopped tumor growth for 20.2 months in advanced forms of hormone-related breast cancer. Twice the time seen with an older therapy alone. The treatment projected to add 3.1 billion dollars in sales by 2020 is based on a strategy largely abandoned in the 1990s after it failed to show consistent response against a broad range of cancers. Since then, a deeper understanding of cancer's diverse genetic underpinnings has emerged, giving drug makers new information on how the drugs called CDKs inhibitors keep tumors from growing and spreading. The breakthrough offers the first major new therapy in a decade for patients whose breast cancer fails to respond to other treatments. There haven't been a lot of new drugs in this space. These drugs are the most exciting to come along in the treatment of estrogen receptor positive breast cancer in a long time. The Pfizer findings coming in the second of three phases of testing, normally needed for U.S. approval, were reported at the American Association for Cancer Research, meeting in San Diego, along with results from an earlier stage study on a similar treatment from Eli Lilly. Lily Munster. The Pfizer outcome may help the company secure faster clearance for a therapy that could one day generate peak sales of six billion dollars a year. What else is new? The big pharma, right? Yeah. Pfizer on Sunday said it is talking with the food and drug administration about such a possibility. We're just not far enough along with the FDA yet. If you grease their palm enough, yeah. you will be. To announce such a move, said Gary Nicholson, head of Pfizer's oncology business. While Pfizer's 
Albo Cyclib improved progression free survival time compared with existing therapy. It wasn't as strong a finding as in the investors expected. ISIs show show in bomb said in a note to clients yesterday that may cause a New York based company stock to drop today. What did Gary Nicholson tell the cancer patients? You can't ha handle the truth. Oh, that's the wrong Nicholson. Sorry. Pfizer isn't alone in pursuing CDK drugs which block a genetic pathway for cellular growth. Indianapolis-based Lily, Eli Lilly, London-based AstraZeneca, PLC, and Novartis, based in Basel, Switzerland, are all testing targets among about 20 types of CDK blockers with the best breast truth, the breast tumor drugs, the furthest along. Lily's drug called Bemacyclib stopped tumor growth for an average of 9.1 months. According to the results announced at the cancer meeting yesterday. About 25% of patients with hormone re receptor positive breast cancer saw their tumors shrink, while 55% had them stay the same size. It's too early to know exactly how the Pfizer and Lilly drugs compare. ISI is a show and bomb, said. One difference is, is that Lilly's therapy can be given continuously, while patients using the Pfizer product may need to break from treatment every Three weeks. Now, I just want to add one little caveat. Shrinking the tumor is not getting rid of the cancer. Since the cancer is a systemic thing, not in one spot where the tumor is. Yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's not about just pinpointing the one tumor and zapping it. it it's, uh, uh, um, there are other factors involved in the treatment of a cancer patient. Correct. Uh, definitely dietary changes. Uh, stress reduction, uh, certain supplements, the immune system, and detox is extremely important to a cancer patient. Detox yeah, you have is to vital. Augment the immune system. Right, because you have, you have to normal, cleanse, the, and you have to cleanse the body too. In a normal, healthy person, it is the immune system who keeps cancer yeah. away because cancer is in the body every day. Well, as you, as you detoxify, uh, your immune system will automatically get a jump start. Yeah, because the liver ain't, don't, doesn't have to take care of all that junk you've got yeah. accumulated there. Yeah. The immune system doesn't have to take care of all that junk you got to and, and when You get a head start, you man. You get a head start, uh, and the body's immune system can 
detect and recognize abnormal cells much better and target them before they become uh, precancerous. That's the normal way. Yes. Right. As soon as they become abnormal, your body normally uh, on a routine uh, basis uh, attacks abnormal cells. But when the body is under stress and you're eating garbage and you're putting chemicals, toxins in your body, and the body is uh, under uh, more and more stress, then the immune system can't handle it. Just like a diabetic taking uh, supplements and, and medication, but they're not getting their diet right. They're not. You have to work with it. Mm -hmm. You got to work with it. Uh, uh, type um, type two uh, the uh, diabetes from uh, a bad diet and obesity would be type two diabetes, right? Yeah. Type two diabetes. If you're not, if your food is not the way it should be, your your food intake not augmented, it's not changed, you're just not going to get cured of your type 2 diabetes. No. And that's why you're obese to begin with. 85% of type 2s are ob uh, overweight, yes. Now, my doctor, <laughs> he, um, he told me, uh, from my last blood test, which happened, um, I guess two months ago, uh, before the uh, the food in the home had to be tailor made for my mom's hypoglycemia, which is actually a healthy way to eat to begin with. Okay, before that, you know, my he said my um, LDL was was high, uh -huh. 150. He said it was high. I says, how's my triglycerides uh, HDL ratio to LDL? He didn't answer me. Uh -huh. He wouldn't answer me. Right away, he, he writes me a prescription for a drug, a, a, a cholesterol lowering drug. Yeah, statin. He didn't even so much as whip out a a diet for high cholesterol and hand me a diet. Immediately, I get no diet. Not that I need his diet anyway, because I, I already know that, what to do. Not, not that. I mean, I mean, he, he had he has nothing to say about diet. He had nothing to say about exercise. All he did was write a prescription, which means he is a, a, a big pharma, like Dr. Oz, a big pharma <laughs> sycophant, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money. Write that well, prescription. Well, it's easy for him. Simple. When I mentioned to him, simple. I mentioned to him the name of a couple supplements. He said, <laughs> "Ah, that garbage. You got it. Ain't gonna work. Ain't gonna do nothing." <laughs> oh no! But the drug will do something. That's right. Yeah. Oh, and it will also do something that it's not supposed to do. Like deplete your CoQ10, and therefore your energy will suffer. Yeah. You see, when you're taking a statin. Statin drug. Statin drug. Now they the, deplete the CoQ10. The natural um, alternative is the red yeast rice, or red rice yeast, red red rice yeast would be uh, the uh, the natural statin. 
Just like valerian root is the natural form of valium. You know, but, uh, you know, the difference is uh, the statin drug has a patent on it. Yeah. The big pharma can make a bundle, has made a bundle off of it. Um, didn't Merck get in trouble with a particular statin drug? Well, like they're all when? going to be in trouble down road because of the fact that the statins do more damage than good. But right now, since it's a big selling item, yeah. they're going to make as much money off of, them, uh, off of it as they can. Nah, no diet. You didn't give me no diet to follow. Remember Vioxx? You mean nothing. Vioxx, 60,000 people died before they were uh, they took it off the uh, market the damage was already done that's correct despite lawsuits the damage was already done you can't bring back your loved one uh, by by receiving monetary compensation that's right you know it's like uh, somebody with a personal injury lawsuit and they get a big bundle the cash, the lawyer fights for them. Okay, now you got all this money, but, but does it? Are you 100% healthy like you were before the accident? Will you recover completely before the accident like you was? One never knows. Money doesn't replace good health. Doesn't replace arms and legs, right? Brain we're, injuries, we're or not, whatever. We're not like uh, invertebrates or uh, or certain reptiles that can regenerate a limb, even though the science is there. The science is definitely there with the DNA and the stem cell and everything. I hear that. Uh, a certain substance is out there that will regenerate, can regenerate a limb, but um, we don't see mainstream advertising it. No. And of course, good Republicans want to reform, tort, tort reform. They don't want you to get those big settlements. But they it, want to limit but it, but your it's o settlement. But it's okay for you to be a victim. Well, I guess so. I guess it's okay to be a victim twice. They want you to be a, a pawn in their greed, a slave, a, a pawn in their quest. The less for money they money. can give to the poor and middle class, the more money they give to their rich partners and friends. Now, do you see just Come how on. how obscenely selfish this attitude is? Yes, it's covered with the Christian cloak. They're wrapped in the American flag and hold, holding a cross, just like that banner, that banner of uh, that stupid. Palin wrapped in an American flag holding a cross. <clears throat> Except she's just blatantly dumb. Her and, uh, and that other uh, but remember what the post menopausal idiot. What the hell's her name? Uh, Michelle Bachman. Bachman. I mean, Ma Ma Malcolm? Bachman. And Bachman. Who's Mal Malcolm? Is it Malcolm? I think Malcolm. No. But Bachman. Bachman. You're, you're referring to Bachman. Yeah, of Minnesota. Yeah. Not Bachman Turner Overdrive. No way. No way. <laughs> Woo! The Senate. Yeah. Voted 59 to 38 to resurrect federal jobless benefits for the long term unemployed. Right. And they small band of Republicans 
supporters. Swiftly appealed to a reluctant speaker, John Boehner, to permit election year action in the House as well. Steps are needed to restore unemployment benefits to struggling Americans. Seven House Republicans wrote Boehner and Majority Leader Eric Cantor of Virginia. They released their letter as the Senate was bestowing its widely expected approval on the legislation. Despite the appeal, the bill's prospects are cloudy at best, given widespread opposition among conservative lawmakers and outside groups and Boehner's unwillingness to allow it to the floor without changes that Republicans can say would enhance job creation. In the Senate, the measure was backed by 51 Democrats, two independents, and six Republicans. It was the first major piece of legislation that Democrats sent to the floor of the Senate when Congress convened early this year. The linchpin of a broader campaign season agenda meant to showcase concern for men and women who are doing poorly in an era of economic disparity between the rich and the poor. The White House back measure would retroactively restore benefits that were cut off in late de December and maintain them through the end of May. Officials say as many as 2.3 million jobless workers have been denied assistance the law expired last year. If renewed, the aid would total about $256 weekly, and in most cases would go to men and women who have been off the job for longer than six months. Anybody ask the question, what are they living on now? Without any income? Or is this not important? Hmm? That's true. That's very true. <clears throat> you know, uh, Vinnie Blake, uh, Venti, Vinnie Blake made a comment about, um, you know, how he's sick and tired of these late night radio talk show hosts because he, you know, he drives the tractor trailer, and uh, he's sick of them talking like, you know, there's opportunity out there. Go get a job. Go find a job. Blah blah blah. This that and the other thing and he says they're just not out there you know and, and 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 if you if you do find something they pay you so little that you can't survive on it it's bullshit he, he was he was pretty pissed off well she was where was he when these things were occurring where was his objections then it wasn't it wasn't hurting Hard ah. enough. It's 
it's well, like personally enough. Right. It didn't hit home enough. It's like, like a person who's afraid of the dentist does not go to the dentist until the pain in the tooth is greater than the fear of the dentist. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah, I mean Ooh, yeah. it's gotta really hit home below the belt in the old Rocky Mountain oysters and the old Coolums, as we say in Italian. It's gotta hit home hard. Yes. For you to fully understand. You gotta feel it to before you fully understand it. And remember it's been going on incrementally for a good thirty four forty years. Little yeah. at a time. You know, like the frog in the water, which starts out cold, but then it's heated up slowly. And before he knows it, he's boiling. Yeah, if you That's put, how they do it. If you put the flame on low, and you put the bullfrogs in the water, they, uh, it's like, it's so gradual, it's so slow, that... The frogs would become unconscious before they'll they'll start boiling, because it'll progressively, slowly, step by step, inch by inch, Susquehanna. Slowly, I turn. turn. Step by step, inch by inch. That's an old uh, Luca, but, yeah. Luca Abbott and Costello Abigail. thing. But anyway, before you know it. They'll be out unconscious before they actually boil to death. Exactly. And that's what they're that's doing. That's what they've done to us. That's what they've done to the people. And uh, you start off, you start out by believing the mainstream media lies until you notice that things are getting worse, not better. And then finally, things get so damn worse in your life. That you just get more, more angrier and angrier, and then the, and more frustrated and more angry, and then the media will say, "Well, that's just your fault. It's uh, not everybody. It's just you." It, it's they, you. And they make yeah. you back off. It's you. They make you back off. It's you. Yeah. Because you think you're the only one. You well, know? if you listen to the media, yeah. yeah. If you have a fellowship with uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of Americans that are going through the same thing or worse, would that be called a union? Excuse me. I, I have to salute unions. Even though people out there online are bitching about unions, accusing them of being corrupt, but they can't be any more corrupt than our leaders, politicians in Washington, and CEOs. Let me tell you something. I salute unions. Particularly, I'm saluting the Teamsters. And if you don't like it, lump it. You'll lump it. That's the way the crab cake crumbles. I could do something else more obscene, but, uh, hey. you know, if you you don't like it, I have a sudden itch in the middle of my forehead that needs to be scratched. All right. Any sentiment being, excuse me, any sentient being. Sentient being? Yes. Is that like a, a lima being, bean? A being with feelings. Oh, okay. Intelligence. Being, okay. Sentient should be able to see the report Governor Christie's Office Commission to look into his own conduct on the man-made traffic disaster at the George Washington Bridge for what it is. And it's very, very fascinating how he gave his, his, uh, 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 
representation bill to the taxpayers of New Jersey. A transparent, self-serving whitewash. Ultimately, however, in my view, it doesn't really matter what Christie knew or did not know, what Bridget Kelly and David Wildstein were doing when they arranged the lane closure. The governor hired and or appointed them. They were his people. Worse still, he created or at least permitted an atmosphere where Kelly and Wildstein thought somehow what they were doing was acceptable. not auditory. Even if he is not strictly to blame, he is certainly at fault. A leader may delegate authority. He or she may not delegate responsibility. I voted twice for Christie. Mistakes. What? Twice? You idiot. You mentioned the name of this idiot at the end. But there isn't the proverbial snowball's chance that I would ever support him for the presidency. Mr. Oh. Warren Nitty. Warren Nitty, you diddy. Is a, is a nitwit. Is it a nitty? Is it a nitwit? What a jerk. How how naive and, and just downright stupid he is for helping to re-elect Chris Christie and not voting for Barbara Bono. I have no idea. I still say Barbara Bono made a big mistake to, uh, to run on an all-female ticket. I don't think America is ready for Governor with a female lieutenant gov governor. It's like with pre it's like Hillary Clinton going, you know, running for president with a female vice president. You, you gotta have Elizabeth balance. Warren. You gotta balance. Elizabeth Warren. It, it, it ain't gonna fly, brother. It ain't gonna fly. A Hillary Clinton Elizabeth Warren ticket will not, and I repeat, will not fly. Because you have to appease the average male. You cannot. You can't. It looks too lesbian <gasps> to have an all-female staff. It's just too lesbian. What if there's the Obama and Biden? Is that uh, homosexual? No, but uh, but, but there's a double but, standard. But the, Sometimes the double standard. Sometimes you gotta go with a little double standard, then to have the the worst of the two evils, the up higher of the two evils, get elected and control the country. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. It, oh, you you'd rather have the Republicans win because Hillary. Elizabeth Warren as her running mate, so it's okay to no, have the Republicans beat them. I would rather have people like you that are going to vote not put in this lesbian thing. What the hell is it going to happen? It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to work. I said, what does it have to do with anything? I'm talking about I'm reality. Part. I'm talking about the, the image that's portrayed throughout America. We're looking at the whole picture. But that's only for certain weird people. You know what? Have Hillary Clinton pick Elizabeth Warren and see what you get with that. You're not going to get it. See this here? This is my brother from another mother, Mr. Anonymous. And 
he agrees that you gotta make sure the lesser of the two evils gets in. But I, 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 any of that? I have no problem. What does any of that have to Listen, do with lesbians? I, I have no problem with Elizabeth Warren with Hillary because I like Elizabeth Warren much better than Hillary. That's I have correct. no problem with it because but, she's a populist she's not a corporatist but yeah it's it's like it's like if you Please. ask me how i feel about bernie sanders i think hey. i think extremely high i'm very i think the world of the guy um uh but, but uh you know he needs to get a little more ferocious with republicans he needs to start using some you know coarse language you know the show that he's at war you know but anyway he's a great guy elizabeth warren fantastic hillary eh, she's a corporatist like her husband but she's a lot better than having a republican get elected no kidding but, but what does any of that have to do with language? because you gotta appease most of the voters you got to appease everybody a lot, a lot of guys are not going to be crazy about an all-female ticket running well, washington that's their problem then well they then should that, deal that, with um, that. that's reality it is but they should deal with it look at look 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 what good it did barbara bono she lost by a landslide he lost because her own people did not support her. See, the liberals never. They always worry about offending somebody. They women. always want to. They're always walking on eggshells. They they, 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 they they, want to be so politically correct that they end up losing the war. And what what happens? We're just going to end up freaking slaves in a, in a privatized prison with, yes. without a pot to piss in because the the, the, the the, the ultra left wing is so afraid of offending people. That's what's going to happen. Or they wanted to go with a winner, which was Christie. You see? But that doesn't. That, that because Satan is behind Christie, and and Christie well, don't know and that. Christie is a, is a horrible, horrible man and an ogre. You know, the winner is not always the best choice for the job. He this never is, because God says he puts the basest of men into public office. The basest. Well, we, we're stuck with him. That's it. For another four years, thanks to uh, uh, Dim Wit, Witty, Diddy, what's his name? Warren Nitty. Warren Nitty. Warren Nitty. Of New Jersey. The Nitwit. The nitwit nitty now, he's sorry he, he, he re-elected Christie and didn't put his faith in... Hey, look, I saw Barbara Bono. Um, I watched both debates against uh, Chris Christie, and she swept the floor with Chris Christie. She was fantastic. She's a woman, and I gave her two thumbs up in the two debates. Thumbs up, yes. Two thumbs up. I never heard the other the one, uh, uh, what's his name, N Nelly, uh, what the hell is her, Lieutenant Governor? I don't remember. Her Spanish lady, pretty, you know, fake. but I never heard her speak, uh, but uh, Barbara Bono did fantastic in the debate, she shocked me, she went right after him, right, right to the jugular vein, she was not like your typical bleed heart left-wing liberal she was not gentle and diplomatic uh -huh. she went right after him and she did not stop going for Chris Christie's job and it made no uh, difference jugular. because she didn't have the support of her own people right the sellouts motherfuckers I hate to use that word uh, sellout blue dog traitors the Democrats in the state of New Jersey did not support their own Barbara Bono, and they went with Christie and 
Christie got reelected, and the rest is history. And now he thought he was a king and could do anything he wanted. King Christie. King Kong Christie. Yeah. Republicans are again complaining about the pay, pay, excuse me, the patient protection and affordable care act and have a new cudgel, President Obama's actions on Russia. House Speaker John Boehner and other Republicans are whining about the latest enrollment extension, as if it is a terrible thing to provide more Americans with the opportunity to obtain health care. Far better had he complained about the Republican governors who refused expanding Medicaid, preventing five million Americans from obtaining insurance. Instead of wasting time holding more than 40 some votes to repeal Obamacare, Boehner's time would have been better spent working. Democrats to improve it and fix its deficiencies. That is, if Republicans seriously wanted all Americans to have health insurance. As to Russia, former New York City Mayor Mr. 911, Rudy Giuliani. Oh, the hero. The, the, the Marvel superhero of 911. And other Republicans have criticized the patient's president's, excuse me, president's measured and thoughtful responses to Crimea. While praising Vladimir Putin as a leader who immediately gets what he wants done. That, however, is the definition of a dictator. Something Giuliani tried to emulate as mayor. An anathema to the definition of a leader in a democracy. And what would, what would they do? Attack Russia? It is truly sad and outrageous that the Republicans, who have done nothing but obstruct every decent proposal made by the President, are more concerned with political attacks and their hatred of Obama than they are with the good of the American people. Well, they're running out of material. They're 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 they're, they're nitpicking with any possible idea they can come up with. Any nitpicking little stupid reason to make Obama look bad, even if it's it's a lie. Well, they said that. Remember, Mitch. McConnell at the beginning. Yeah. We want to make him a one term president. I don't, I don't know why um, the um, Obama administration doesn't just flat out tell the American people that the Republican Congress cut the funding to protect the embassies and, and, and to help, help uh, uh, make Hillary Clinton to be fair to Hillary Clinton and take some of the blame off of her shoulders and just go to bat for her and come clean, but there's, a, there's something about the Democrats in Washington today that they don't really want to go after the Republicans the same way Republicans go because after the Democrats. Because you know why? Because they're afraid of Republicans. Because 
They're hilarious. liberal. They're they're Our they're dirty chicken fighters. livers. They're they're they're, they're pansy. Do you see the the hippie mentality with with, with uh, liberal Democrats? This this uh, uh, I I love you, Barney the dinosaur. I love you. You love me. Crap. Even if they don't love them, I'm telling you, they are afraid of them. Why? Because they are dirtier fighters. Well, you gotta be dirty. You gotta wear short sleeves or roll up roll up the sleeves you have, and you gotta get down and dirty. Street fight them. You gotta do it. Republicans are better at it. Why are they better, better at it? Because they've been doing it longer. Because Democrats, <laughs> Democrats are have no backbone today. Spineless. You, you know how many people uh, uh, told me that I'm I'm being mean and I'm too outspoken. I said, well, what do you what would you rather do? Lose the war against conservatives and and just have things get worse and worse and worse. What would you rather do? Do you want me you want me to speak be like Barney the dinosaur and, and blow sunshine up everybody's ass? I think what the Stick, you know, what the House of Representatives hippies. and the Republicans are showing today, that war is lost. That yeah. war is lost. Oh, they call you a hater Long and they say ago. you're negative. Instead of saying you're dealing with life as it is, the real truth, they'll call you a hater. All right. Be a lover and see how far that gets you with the Republican Congress. Democrats are baby killers, secular humanists, atheists, etc. That can never change. A human life, never change. a fertilized egg, and, and, if, and an embryo that breeds like a fish is not a proven human life. Stick to the facts. Stick to science. How could you fight truth and the facts? Because the Republicans don't believe in science. Well, Cares what they believe in and what they don't believe in. Because they're in power. You prove they them, get what they want you prove, done. You prove them wrong. That hasn't worked since uh, Jennings Bryan. Okay. Hasn't worked. How are we doing on time, there, Jack? It's four o'clock. Oh, really? On do, the clock. Do we have one not? so long reading? If it's not, we'll just... Reports that Westboro Baptist Church pastor and founder Fred Phelps is on his deathbed have some looking forward to the anti-gay activist demise. The Facebook page Fred Phelps Death Watch was created Sunday and has nearly 3,500 likes. So if he croaks, what what is that going to do for the he's gay croaked. What is it? What is that going <clears> to <throat> do for for gay rights and gay people? One man died. Brandy Lynn Wahlberg, a stay-at-home mother in Wisconsin who created the page, she has, said... She has my sympathy. Says Scott Walker, a country, right? Correct. It is meant as a satirical outlet for people who oppose the Phelps. Sometimes it's easier to make light of an ugly situation and to just laugh at everything, she said. True. Wahlberg said she has received comments questioning the morality of celebrating a man's death. But she said, commenting on the page, that can be cathartic. Another Facebook page protests Fred Phelps funeral was created in 2012. Nate Thomas, a creator of the page, said it is symbolic and is not advocating a protest. 
our page offers Facebook users a place to vent anger and frustration or forgiveness and well wishes. Thomas said he's not looking forward to Phelps' death, but I'm glad he will no longer be able to hurt anybody else. It's only one one right-wing nut out of a whole legion of them. The problem with Phelps' death will be that he has not recognized how much pain his actions have caused. Oh, brother. I am a follower of Jesus. And I think Jesus is grieved with the idea that he is dying before he could apologize and make, make things right. What? Oh, they, all these people have bat phones to God. It's amazing. Well, Mr. Phelps thought he did. Well, so did Harold Camping. Azariah Southworth, a blogger, student, at Purdue University said, the best way for gay is to respond to Phelps is with love. Well, or or don't give FaceTime to certain people. Ignore them. You know, it's, but it seems like the media just loves to give FaceTime to all the wrong people. We are preaching love for ourselves and for our right to love. Let's go all the way with the message and show love to the most unlovable person. Sounds like Bonnie the Dinosaur. You love me, I love you. Let's all love everybody. Woo! For Al Snyder, there will never be forgiveness for Phelps. Snyder is the father of Lance Corporal Matthew Snyder, a Marine who died in the Iraq War in 2006, and whose funeral in Westminster, Maryland was picketed by Westboro members. Picketed. Yeah, that's what Phelps used to Piccadilly do. Piccadilly Circus. Uh -huh. That's what he used to do. He used okay. to go out there and and, and, and call all the military men's funerals, the, the dead gays, and, mm -hmm. and God hates you, and hates fag. Oh, I remember all. that. Yes, yes, that's him. Let him croak. And you'll probably have the second death, too. Burned up in the lake of fire. Perhaps. One never knows. <coughs> Excuse me. Why? I hate the man, Snyder yeah. said. Mm -hmm. Snyder sued Phelps for damages based on emotional distress. In a 2011 ruling, the Supreme Court sided with Phelps. Oh, gosh. Saying Westboro was protected by free speech to picket military funeral. And what about uh, when the when the tables are turned? What about when uh, And Mr. Scalia forgets what he wrote ten years ago. Yeah. And changes the rules. That's what happens. Though Snyder dislikes Phelps he said, I still feel everybody has the right to be buried in peace. Yeah, and to have their funeral with dignity and, and also peace. And not and not to upset the loved ones of the the deceased, you know, and make things worse than they already are. I'm surprised people didn't go over and beat the shit out of them. People, people that were at the funeral. In my, in 
my our neighborhood, my family had a heckler. You know, the Italians kill them. Mm-hmm. Phelps would have been would have been uh, executed right on the street and pummeled. But he's a good Christian. Why? Because he says so. Yes, of course. And he knows what God is thinking. The same thing and with Huckabee. The same thing with Santorum. The same thing. And they, they all claim to be good Christians. And they do. They want to do. Bachman. They want to represent God, and they want to take it upon themselves to do God's work. And they oh, want they to, don't do God's work. They want to speak. Well, well okay. and, they're, and they're delude deluded mind. They want to speak for God, but they're not. They're speaking for themselves. Right, and they have bad phones to God. No, they're actually speaking for the other guy. No. Yeah, that's what they do. That's, that's the guy that G.W. Bush spoke to. Not the, the not the God of the Bible. Go into Iraq. Go into Iraq. Go into Iraq. <laughs> Profiteering, war profiteering money to be made yes yeah so that's about it huh chief that, as far that, as mine concerned here yes that wraps it up ladies for, and germs for, for this <coughs> oh speaking of uh ladies and germs and comedians uh, uh i saw don rickles on the david oh Lattie i love show. don rickles He's having his 88th his 88th birthday is coming up real soon, and he was sharp as a tack and and witty and you know and he's great he's great he's still alive and uh, he had a problem um, he had surgery emergency surgery there was, there was a lesion on his leg and it was some sort of flesh eating bacteria. It was. They said if they didn't, if they oh, didn't, yeah. if they didn't remove it then and there, and if it would have went up to his knee, mm. and I quote, Rickles was even making jokes about this. He says I would have to. I would end up being a pirate with Johnny Depp in the movie, <laughs> <laughs> which, me, which meant they would have to amputate. Yeah. But he's okay. The surgery went well, and uh, uh, we salute. God rest is, uh, I mean, God bless him there. Don Rickles. Yeah, don't rest them yet. Dear. No, no, 88 years old. Or is it 89? 88. 88 years old. All right. Yeah. What about 88 years young? He was very f- close with Frank Sinatra. They were close friends. Yeah. And Frank Sinatra was invited to uh, the uh, Ronald Reagan inauguration. And uh, he wanted to bring Rickles with him, and uh, the Reagan people, Secret Service, whatever, says, no, no, we don't want Rickles. And Sinatra says, well, if you don't accept Don Rickles, don't accept. I'm not coming. I'm not going to show up. Cool. That was his friend. And I I was very nice to him, you know. uh, But anyway, Don Rickles. Good health to you. Uh, and uh, anyway, thank you for joining us for this week's uh, uh, Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. Time flies, man. The weeks fly by. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the next uh, the next so-called holiday, uh, I think, might be Mother's Day. Yeah, the 11th. And then followed by Memorial Day weekend. Oh! And the summer opens up. The official the lakes and the ocean all open up. Officially, the, the rip off uh, Jersey Shore, where you have to pay for everything and pay dearly, will open up. The lifeguards will be out on the beach. All the fools will be fighting traffic to get there. And uh, it, it's the they call it the unofficial beginning of summer. Lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer, and uh, but you won't catch yours truly in 
bumper to bumper traffic on any highway during Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July weekend, and Labor Day weekend. Because I know better. Take care. I definitely know better. It's called the strategy of efficient common sense living not too many people know about. Mm. Say so long to these people, man. So long to people who don't know about. Who don't know shit from Shinola. Mm -hmm. This has been a Megalife 21 production.